And welcome back to the big exclusive podcast. Looks a little different, right? Right now, we have a little something different for you. This is the big exclusive podcast interview series. Something a little bit different. We doing myself, OG, and Top Flight. We will be doing interviews um, as exclusive content for YouTube and NGTV. So I get to go first. I don't know if you guys are excited about that or not. I am because I have a who I think is a super dope special guest. Um, he is a film and TV actor as well as voiceover commercials. He teaches. We're gonna get into that in a second, but you know, I gotta do what I always do. We gotta show the sponsors some love so that we can continue to do this thing that we call podcasting. Again, special shout out to Angry OG, comedian top flight. I got this interview, Dolo. They'll be having their interviews coming up. If you want to check out the exclusive content, be sure to always follow the social media. That's the biggest exclusive podcast on everything. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, any of the social medias. You just go big exclusive podcast or the big exclusive podcast, and you'll be able to find us. Make sure you follow us, like us, comment, share. It all helps the algorithm help us grow. And we appreciate you guys helping us grow. Um, sponsors, I got to get out the way right quick. Shout out to iCraftmart. That's www.icraftmart.com. Be sure you head over to that website, get you some shea butter, get you some lotion, um, get you some organic soap. Anything that you need, you can find over on iCraftmart.com. That's for health and beauty. Shout out to Critical Shot Studios. If I look good, I sound good. You can blame it on my executive producer, Don Nickens over at Critical Shot Studios. Super appreciate him. Uh, major shout out to Epic Graphics and Crafts, the exclusive merchandiser for the Big Exclusive Podcast. If you guys need some Big Exclusive Podcast merchandise, you know what to do. Hit up Epic Graphics and Crafts. Inbox me. Do whatever you need to do to get you a hoodie. It's still windy out there. We on the East Coast. We in Philly, which is the home base. Uh, I would say brotherly love and sisterly affection. But as of late, we've been kind of wilding out there. So let's get it together um, here in, you know, the city that I love so much. Um, I'm going to get into the shout outs because we got a bunch of check ins right now. And I want to make sure I'm showing some love. But I got to give out our last and final shout out to our sponsor, Shea Harmony. Shea Harmony offers all natural products for the body, but their whipped shea butter being their most exclusive item. Shea Harmony whipped and scented shea butter is sure to keep your skin moisturized, soft and smooth. And it'll also leave you smelling amazing. Shea Harmony also offers natural soaps, hair and beard oil, essential oil remedies, and more. You can find all Shea Harmony products over at www.icraftmart.com. Please, please, please make sure you guys support our sponsors. Without them, this thing we call the big exclusive podcast with Angry OG and Comedian Top Flight would not be possible I'm super excited for this new series that we're doing. It's the interview series. Hopefully, we bring you guys some dope guests. This first one, right out the gate, this couldn't be a more fitting interview right out the gate for our very first interview series. Um, when I say this brother is in Hollywood, he doesn't live in Hollywood, but he's in Hollywood. He's rubbed elbows with the biggest and best Hollywood has to offer. That's directors, producers, and talent. Um, Right out the gate, let's show some love to Jabira. She said, what's up? Christine said, hey, y'all. Dawn said, hey, bro. Thomas with the Yizzo. Um, Dawn, good evening, everyone. Curtis, my man, Kurt Brown. I, I, I should give a special shout out to Kurt and his company. Um, he has a podcast. It's the company and the podcast all rolling into one. That's the head nerds in charge. Be sure to check him out. Uh, Wednesday nights, I want to say at uh, 9 p.m., you can check out the head nerds in charge with his wonderful and colorful cast of ladies and gentlemen over there. Shout out to Teffy, Onai Sassy, and everybody else that's a part of the head nerds in charge. Love my brother. He's very, very hard working, man. I appreciate him lining up this interview because he's the reason that, you know, we have Hollywood in the building. Uh, Natasha Murphy says, hello. Bro, no, never any need to thank me, bro. I appreciate you. You know how we do. We the flight brothers. You know, you throw it up there. I'm going to grab it at midair and dunk it. And I know you're going to do the same. I appreciate you, my brother. And like 
again, if I mention someone else's podcast on here, it's so that our family, all these comments, and you guys in here, make sure you support them because that's you know, like you guys are family. Other podcasts that I really love are family, head nerds in charge, Jamie Jams at WJMS Media, um, Charles Gregory and We Talk Weekly. Um, who else? T Scott over at Love Life Wednesday. Um, who else? I know I'm forgetting some people charge it to my head and not my heart. I appreciate all the podcasts and other platforms that support me. But without further ado, I got to bring in my special guest because I'm so excited to have him here tonight. Like I said, he is a film and television actor. He's also a producer, voice actor, director. Um, he's done everything from major motion pictures to television. I mean, this guy does it all. And I'm fascinated and I can't wait to talk to him about his work on GTA Online as one of my favorite games. And I'm sure it's a lot of people's favorite game out there as well. But without further ado, I'd like to bring in David the O Oliver. How you doing tonight, brother? What's up, man? You know what I'm saying? Oh, 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 oh. You got the cheers on. Oh, oh, oh. Got to do it right. Yeah, hey. yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies love it. Ladies. I see you come, you know, with your own sound effects and all that. Um, Man, gotta do it. Gotta do it. It's a hey, if if how's how's it go? Uh, if you fail to prepare, then prepare to fail. Exactly. Exactly. Like to all my students, you play, you rehearse like you play. That way, you're guaranteed to always have fun. You can always have room for improvisation as well as stay on technical aspects without losing the beat. All right, so I, you know, I want I want you to look. I made the introduction, so I need you to tell my audience a little bit about who you are. Unless you want me to read the bio, I could do that too. But I think our audience would love to hear directly from the horse's mouth who you are and how you got started in this industry. Well, man, I'll tell you like this: that introduction, first of all, was really great, man. You made me sound important. So, right. <laughs> like, this brother, right. thinking, what are you talking about me? What are you talking about Paco? See, my boy Paco always with me on the screen. That's my man with me all the time. That Shout boy, out to Paco. You know what I'm saying? But no, man, I tell everybody the truth. The short form is I started off as a fan, basically. That's why I got this program called Fandom to Stardom, because it was just pretty much me, like every other guy coming up in the 70s and the 80s. We love Bruce Lee. We love Five Deadly Venoms. And of course, Soul Train, American Bandstand, and of course, your Saturday morning cartoons. And, you know, over the years, I was always told because, you know, there was no real outlet for us to really branch out unless we went to New York or LA. And it wasn't until I started dancing behind people that it made a difference. And then when I started dancing on BET, that really took it to another level because I was able to meet celebrities and, you know, real industry people and talk. And then, the birth of reality shows got me out there in 2004. Uh, it was Mona Scott when they was doing their talent search for what she was trying to do with Jermaine Dupri and Missy Elliott being executive producers and judges. And man, I got a spot. And the teaching aspect of what I do was born that day as well because a lady saw what I was doing, saw that I made it through the third round and asked could I talk to her daughter who, you know, she just did fun with her friends, but she really wanted her daughter to learn. And so next thing I know, I went to go talk to her daughter and 75 people grabbed my attention and we just did it. And then I ended up in my own commercials. So basically, fandom to stardom. Hey, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, uh, what, what do they call luck? Like, preparation meets um, hard work. I think that's how I go. Well, I'll put it to you like this, because everybody always says that about me, but I keep telling them, I say, no, it's a thing that I got inside my head, man, and coming up in D.C., it's a thing where we don't got a lot of opportunities. It's the most powerful city in the world, but yet we don't got a lot of opportunities when it comes to real entertainment and being legit. You know, we're known as a copycat city. And for me, it was like, nah, man, I can't see an opportunity that, say, for example, you could do, say you want to be the next Michael Strahan. And there's an opportunity for you to do it. And I'm saying I really support you. I'm a fan of yours. 
I love big exclusives. So I'm talking to you and you be like, yeah, Dave, let's go do this, do this. So instead of giving you $20 or so for a t-shirt, I'll give you $20, $50 and let's go get you the next thing to do, Michael Strahan thing. And then all of a sudden you dip out for whatever reason, you dip out. Next thing you know, I say, well, shoot, he ain't did it. I don't like all this stuff. Let me give it a try. Mm. Boom. And that's it. It's just, you failed to take the shot. I said, well, shoot, I'm going to take the shot. The ball right there. The hoop right there. Okay. So I came. And next thing you know, I'm going to be ET dancing. And that's how I started. <laughs> nice. You hey, you guys saying? out there listening, it, tonight is, isn't any different than any other night. I need y'all to make sure you guys are sharing the stream uh, and showing some love. And if you have questions, the chat is open, please. If you have any questions, you can place them in the chat. Um, can I play something for the people real quick? Because I don't think they know who we dealing with right now. I'm going to play something for you guys just so you know that we not talking about, you know, the intro was there for a reason. You remember how Steve Harvey on the Kings the Comedy Tour bring them in? I bring them in. It was the reason I bring them in like that. And I'm going to show y'all why I brought them in like that because I don't want y'all to play around with this man as if, you know, he ain't out here in these Hollywood streets being great okay take a look at this what about you sir what would you take if you only had minutes to evacuate well first i make sure my family is safe of course then i guess i grab the photo albums my father's urn and the blanket we brought our daughter home in from the hospital important memories they are for me soda water and a whiskey glass Trying not to. Hey, cowboy. Yes, sir. Have fun. If you're visiting an inmate in the maximum security wing, go on a single file line to your right. Excuse me. How are you doing? Rules say no one leaves. So no one leaves. I'm not losing my money. Wait. He's below us. Steal their phone. Steal their money. <laughs> How about you give us your phones? Mr. Kennedy was a known gangster out of Long Beach. Uh, he was part of the Long Beach Insane Crips, had an extensive criminal record, including an attempt murder. They then called uh, Mr. Hawks, who came out and picked all three of them up. John Fitzgerald Kennedy is introduced as his accountant. Then he brought him out to the vessel. JFK feigns being seasick and says, I have to go below to the uh, bathroom. Mr. Hawks went down to check on JFK and Skyler followed. Once Skyler followed down there, they physically overpowered Mr. Hawks. He's tasered. They basically wrestled him to the ground and he's handcuffed downstairs. But Tom's desperate final effort fails. John Kennedy in the sucker punch of all sucker punches ran up and punched Tom Hawks in the side of the head, knocking him unconscious, at least temporarily. You gave these kids an opportunity that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah, I know, but it's just that I was... What? Well, it's gonna sound kind of stupid, <laughs> but I really thought I was gonna meet him. <laughs> I'm serious, I thought that's what the whole voice thing was about. If I build it, he would come. I was looking for something more magical to happen today. I think something magical is still going to happen today. What? If you build it, mm -hmm. he will come. And that's the old ladies and gentlemen. But wait, there's more. We're going to get into that later. We just played those clips, right? 
and you've done so much more than that. We have more stuff to show. Um, said David has done so much. Um, let me add him back to the stream. Okay, yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. All right, and Christine said that's dope. Congratulations. Thank you. But, um, so here's my thing: as a person who has acting on his bucket list. What is the experience like? Are you getting? I'm getting feedback. Do you have another device on? Uh, shouldn't be. It might just need a speaker, man. It might just need a second. Take me out for a second. Let me just check the settings. Sorry okay, that, folks. Go ahead. So most of you guys know that you know I have a bucket list. We talk about it on the podcast all the time, and acting is on my bucket list, right? And if you can hear the sound of my voice, I want you guys to name some things that you have on your bucket list. It's funny because I was just talking to um, my producer today and I was telling him that, you know, I want to write and star in a short film. When I say short film, I'm talking 10 to 15 minutes. That's it. Right. So I wanted to start the process of, of writing it and, and just trying to see, you know, if I have any acting chops. And when I was talking to David earlier, he had gave me some advice. Now, I'm not going to give that advice away because it's definitely not free. He has some acting classes. He's also a teacher. Um, but he gave me some great advice, and I'm going to take that advice. And I'm going to start working on, you know, a script. I have Final Draft Pro. Don't ask me how to use it. I just got it. Um, but I have Final Draft Pro, and I have some pretty dope friends who I think are going to, you know, really want to help me be a part of my, you know, 10 to 15 minute short that I want to do. Cause I have the acting bug, like it's on my bucket list, but what does it feel like to walk on a Hollywood set? Right. Mm. And deliver lines. Cause uh, if I'm not mistaken, you know what I mean? I think it was Morgan Freeman. He, and he said, um, is he the Morgan Freeman or Denzel Washington? who said, if you want to understand acting, close your eyes, and just fall backwards. Acting is understanding and knowing that somebody is there to catch you. And that says to me, that's a hell of a commitment mm -hmm. to just fall blindly and know somebody will catch you. And to me, I thought that was one of, I, I thought that was incredible to even think of acting that way. So I'm interested to see, how do you feel about acting and what's it like to walk on a Hollywood set? Well, that's a two-parter. Can you hear me clear? I just want to make sure I'm good. I can hear you pretty clear, yes. Okay. It's a two-parter, because listen to what you're saying. First, walking onto a Hollywood set. That, first, is a whole nother experience by itself. Because, like, I still remember walking onto the set of Gotham, and, you know, you always see the movies where they show the outside of Paramount or Warner Brothers Gates, and you're like, oh, that that'd be really cool. Well, right there in the middle of Brooklyn, out of nowhere, near the water, there's a studio where they shoot Gotham at. And man, I mean, I just literally just got off a bus, walked down the street, and it was like, whoa. Then I get in these huge buildings, gigantic posters of all this stuff they've done. And then they say, go up to the Hall of Heroes. Man, I'm saying, they're like, what did she say? Hall of Heroes, what the hell is that? And I'm like, it's also just the league shit. So <laughs> they said, we'll go with the dressing. We'll go with the fitting. We're going to get you taken care of. Man, I walk in a huge room. My man pull out, boop, 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 Georgia Armani, all these suits. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Me? Okay. <laughs> you know, give my model on. And he pull out this bad joke, man, Jet Black with the G J Green um, vest. With the Paisley print, brother, I was feeling fly. <laughs> I was taking my body right. I like, oh, this is lovely. And then to get on set. Now, the second part of that, to deliver lines, because I'll tell you honestly, this was going to mess your audience up. I'm really not an actor. Like I tell people all the time, there's a reason why I don't go the route of most of the actors you know that be sitting off in the corner and all this other fellow and all this other stuff. Because again, I'm a fan. I just happen to be studying stuff all these years and not realizing what I was absorbing. So watching all these movies, 
games and things of that nature, it just stuck in my head. And again, like I said earlier, when the opportunity presented itself, I said, man, I do these characters that come in my head and I have the ability to world build. So those of you who play simulation games will understand what that means. You're building an entire world. So imagine if you built an entire person, how would that feel and look to you? And that's what most actors are technically doing, especially the A and B listers that we all love, like a Denzel Morgan and so on. But my guy was Michael Clark Duncan. And because I'm a Gemini, the other guy was Robin Williams. And when I watch Robin Williams, I mean, he can just fall in and out of different people. So I'm listed as a character actor because I can take on an entire entity from the movements to the breath and everything to the facial tics. And in that one piece you showed in particular, my agents could not believe that that was me when I was playing that gangster for the ID channel. Because they were like, one facial expression changed your whole demeanor. And that's what happened. That's how I got the part. That's pretty incredible. Now, how, how early do you get the script um, before you start shooting? Man, the night before sometimes. And then sometimes they got rewrites. You know, that's why I tell people you can't be uptight in this game. You got to be loose because you never know. They can change stuff. And then, again, I, <laughs> when you play the commercial reel and you see me in the CarMax commercial, that line I deliver is mine. I just happened to say it off camera when we was doing a rehearsal. And the director's like, what did you say? I said, um, it's something the ladies say to the kids when they mess up. Mm, that's sad. <laughs> and it stayed in the commercial. And I didn't know. And the same with the AutoZone thing. I'm doing this, doing that. And sometimes, like even in the Gotham piece, the way they wanted me to deliver the line wasn't the way I delivered the line in the final show. So that's wow. why I say world building, people building. That's why I tell people that's the crust of acting. If you understand how to build a world and then build the people in that world, you can then take that skill and apply it to when you have to build the character that they give you. Because a lot of times people don't get when they give you a character, it's pretty much something already in their head. Your job is to take it out of their head and manifest it into the real world. And they go, oh, yeah, get him her. Boom. So one, one, one of my favorite actors is... Uh... Oh, can I say something real quick? You yeah, absolutely. Real quick. I want to give you good news because you did say something about what you want to do. Well, my student just did her short film. I went and as AD'd her short film this weekend for an HBO film competition, um, Javi Osei. And she's usually hosting on Godfrey's podcast, and that's how we connected. And she was not expecting all of this and on her first time out. And I told her, she did an excellent job. And you said something about gathering your friends. She did an excellent job of gathering her friends and family members, <clears throat> excuse me, and other colleagues. And what I loved about this group was that they knew what level they were on, and they accepted what I was bringing you know what I'm saying? Not as an OG, but as a colleague, because they knew I was respecting their positions. Right. And it was great. And, and let's tell the people what I told you earlier. The information I can give away tonight is good. It's free. It, okay. I, I tell people all the time, I've been trying to give this stuff away for free for the long. So that's why I'm actually here, bro. I don't, what I'm going to charge you for later, oh, it's going to mess your whole world up. I call <laughs> it the Jeet Kune Do of acting. I get you auditioning techniques, networking techniques, as well as acting techniques that are guaranteed to make you win in the audition room, because that's the area that we play in. Not okay. the set, not the stage, the audition room. Because the person okay. that's most important, not the producer, not the director, not the studio ex, the casting person. Ah, the casting directors. Yes, that's the people. I always tell people, even when I used to do music, anybody that's frumpy looking or regular looking that's with your artist, Talk to that person, not the artist, because the artist is doing their thing. They're on flight time. But that person is always on business. Angry OG in the building. He come through with his signature. Hello. Hey, now. OG. With I, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, wait, he does comedy. Um, He is hilarious. Now, he's not a comedian by trade. Okay. He is just okay. one of those naturally gift you know who he reminds me of 
George Carlin. He tells a hell of a story and it's not meant to be funny, but he's incredibly funny. And when I tell you he is a huge reason why people tune into the Big Exclusive Podcast, I'd say he's about uh, 70% tune in for OG, 15 for me, and 15 for Top Flight, okay? <laughs> he He is... Yo, first of all, we've been, we've been, he's known me. We grew up in the same neighborhood, so he's known me all my life. And uh, he's been, he's been a, an incredible friend, confidant, support system. Like, Angry OG is more than a personality to me on the podcast. Like, I, I definitely love him like a big brother. So I'm always appreciate him. Um, but he doesn't think he's funny. He doesn't think he's entertaining. He's one of those people, bro. Like, when you when, when you watch uh, a couple of the podcasts, you, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But he he is gold, and he doesn't even know it. He like yo, I don't think like that. I don't know what you're talking about. Like he is gold, bro. And I'm trying to develop something just for him. He needs his own show. Christine, I'll take your word for it. Because guess what? What he's gonna have is a moment of inspiration. Can I give it to him, brother? It's, it's, it's at your leisure. Because this Floor is your friend. Floor Let me give your friend a bit of information. You just described me, my man. Really? You just described me again. I spent twenty years in the shadows, being other people's support system, popping up, not realizing people are getting their feelings because of what I'm doing. It's a natural gift. Because I wasn't a cute one. I wasn't a built one. I wasn't the one going through the church or going through the schools and all this other stuff. Again, I'm in the streets, man, doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? Doing rough, rugged fighting, going, doing security for people, all this stuff. But when it came time to talk and I want to give him an extra bit, here's the thing, bro. I'm a talent scout as well. Didn't say it in the resume. Keep it as a secret until it's necessary to be known. And number two, here's the second gift to your friend. My management represents comedians, and I'm also trying to help Big Kurt get out there as well. Because Kurt, you know, Curtis used to do comedy, and he wanted to switch up. But like I told him, I said, with this team here, let's go. And right now, because it's pilot season, a lot of these companies are going to start kicking out actors that can't book. So come April, baby, it's spring cleaning. And if you got it together, my brother, I offer you an opportunity to show me what you got. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, OG. He said, y'all try and make me cry. I'm not trying to make you cry, bro. I'm just trying to give you your flowers because you deserve them. And you most certainly one of the funniest people that I know personally. And he never sees it. He never sees it. But when I tell you he's he's great, he is fantastic. I just um, don't want you to do like me. That's what I'm trying to say. Because I made that mistake, bro. And the reason why I say it's a mistake is because you have a beautiful group of people around you. You got a show already going. My brother, step in and just dive, baby. Take the live, take the enjoyment from the people, and just rock it. That's all I'm going to tell you, brother. I don't care. It ain't about being famous. That That's not what I live in. I live in this achieving something at 100% right. So whether I quit today or 10 years from now, I'd be like, whew, I did that. That's right. all I want you to be able to say. That's the gift that your friend, Big Exclusive, just gave you, man, from the O, baby. So listen, I I, I got to put you on the spot right quick, right? Sure. Because I currently uh, uh, count you count you uh, amongst my friends now. So when I when I put together this 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 short, mm -hmm. and and I and 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 I pick up the phone, I say, "Dad, I need you. I got a role mm -hmm. for you." You know what I mean? I know you SAG, you union, mm -hmm. figure out the budget. Mm -hmm. But can I get you to commit on camera right now that you're gonna come play a role in my short? Well, first of all, don't worry about SAG and all like that, brother. You said you need the help. That's all wow. I heard. You see, what I'm I didn't hear a gig. I need the see help. terminology, brother. Words <laughs> matter. Words right on. So you didn't matter. say gig, you said role for a project that I'm just trying to do. Cuckoo. So, say that. <laughs> I told so, you what I did for my student. Now she went through SAG for low budget. So it, it doesn't really take nothing, man. And 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 
again, she just did that for technicality to make sure when she submits, she's good. So that's what I'm saying. You can do the same. SAG is always interested in independent projects because there's a thousand actors, man, who needs five seconds. If you gave them actors five seconds in your movie, brother, you'd be surprised how fast your room will, your room will fill up with people auditioning, man. I'm just trying to tell you. And listen, that's what I got to say about uh, Lamont, the angry OG, man. Mm -hmm. he, he he we were talking about something i think it was the olympics and how uh shikari richardson was banned and then this other russian young lady was able to still compete mm -hmm. and he had said something and made this face man and i was so mad that we didn't catch it on camera because he wasn't looking at the camera he was looking at me and i'm trying to get him accustomed to looking at the cameras as he speaks because naturally, you want to look at somebody when you talk to them. You've been taught that all your life as a man. Look at right. somebody when you're talking to them. And I'm trying to explain, like, you know, you know, shows are different. Podcasts, being on camera is different. You want to kind of focus on the camera so the people can see your face. And it was the most scene-stealing face and statement that I had witnessed in, 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 I guess, ever, really. Like, it was just hilarious. And, like, that's the kind of thing, like you said, those five seconds could send you send to the moon, to Alice. Alice. Send you and to the moon. And that's what I teach my students when we're in class. Everybody leaves the class crying, angry, or sad. Because I tap into memories so that, again, like Jeet Kune Do was ready for street fighting, right? So right. this is the thing of you going into an audition room and they tell you, okay, you want you read for the old black man. Then they say, hey, man, can you read for the angry young guy who just graduated from college? Of course. Now you've been prepping for the old man, but here right. are shit. But with the technique I'm giving you, you are gonna flip it because you already read it. You already got your memories from when you was in school. Mm. So we know that mind. Then you know how your grandfather or your father was, or some OG in your life was, and you take it. And that's how you do it. All right. So you you've been on the set of so many film and television. Um, is there a difference between? film and television when it comes to acting oh hell yeah oh hell yeah oh hell yeah i'm sorry i have to say it like that because no, people, no, ask me that. people come to class and i'll be looking at them like what did you think you were coming to do because they're reading like they reading at their church or their school they're not even reading like they're reading for the theater nor the stage nor the commercial nor the film and that's why i teach them i say there's a difference between theater television commercial and film because each has a different tempo and amount of time associated with it. And you have to come a certain way. Like with theater, you got to be big. You got to be voices and you got to control your voice at great distances and give all that emotion into a large space. With commercial, you have to condense everything you would normally say in one minute into five seconds and make it believable. With television, it's about subtlety because you don't really got a lot to do. It's right there between you and the other actor and then with film, again, more time, more space, but again, a little bit of different with the subtlety because now they want you to evoke a lot more into your body. So with that being said, let's play some of your commercial work. So people, because they just saw some of your television work, let's give them some of your commercial work so they can see those differences and and and, and those nuances, okay? All right. I'll be off camera. I'll wait. Because I love my if you see my reaction to stuff you're playing, it's hilarious. I'm gonna be <laughs> cracking up laughing like that dude. <laughs> Here we go. David the O Oliver. Commercial reel. The news today is crazy. Mm -hmm. You're not going anywhere dressed like that. Why? You know why. <laughs> Dog pound, baby. Right. According to the Howell family, Auntie Jen's friend and her son can live with them as long as they want. According to the census, it doesn't matter if you're related or not. Everyone living in your home on April 1st counts because this count helps inform funding on how billions get spent every year. And where there are more people, there are more needs. 
Complete the census online, by phone, or by mail. I was like, you got to do what? Doc, that's not going to happen. <laughs> then my buddy got diagnosed. It was prostate cancer. And if they had found it sooner, yeah, my wife's been bugging me about getting screened. But that, <laughs> it really shook me. It's time to man up. When the branches are convenient, and the advice is sound, and decisions are made locally, and when you're treated like a neighbor, you worry less about money and other things, too. And you enjoy the everyday a little easier and a little more. And you just feel, hmm, what's the word? Community Bank, N.A. Bank Happy. Show it off, America. Show off that alternator you replaced. Show off the battery, the brake job, the rebuilt 454. You did it. There are a lot of places you can go to do it yourself, but there's only one place that can help you do it right, AutoZone. Because even the pros know parts are just part of what we do. We have the advice, the instructions, we even loan tools. So show it off, America. You did it right. Get in the zone. AutoZone. You got your science project in your folder? The last thing I need to worry about are doctor's bills. Too much sugar, young man. Right or the cost of my employee's health coverage. Or how my 26-year-old daughter's gonna get her own health plan. Or where early retirees like us find health insurance until we reach 65. So, don't worry. Geisinger Health Plan has answers. At the new GeisingerMarketplace.com, you'll find plans for everyone at affordable prices. Find the right plan for you. Visit GeisingerMarketplace.com. Dog pound, baby. <laughs> oh, man, the stories behind them jokes, man. And I even got a Morgan Freeman moment. That's why it's funny you bring him up earlier because one of those commercials, and I'm going to do a trivia, which one you think was my Morgan Freeman moment? And I'll see which one you think it is. Um, I would say the prostate one. You got it. You yeah. got it. <laughs> You got it. Most people don't get it. They think all the other stuff I do, but I'm like, nope. That was the moment I had my breakthrough with both, like I said earlier, the casting director and myself. And uh, to explain it in short form, because I don't want to bore you guess, but it was a day where I got a random hit from the uh, manager to go up there and read in New York. And, you know, I think it was like a holiday. Yeah, it was a holiday. And it wasn't too many people in the office. So this is the first time me and the casting director, very busy man, had a chance to sit down and talk. So I'm reading the scene like, yeah, you know, my wife would tell me to go get checked up. And, you know, I've been really feeling about it, but I don't know. And since my friend, and he's like, okay, Dave, I see you. He said, I've been watching you. I know how you talk. He said, the way you're reading is good, but let me have you read it as if it was you going through this. You've been through this, right? And I said, yeah, man, I just had a recent prostate exam. You know, I'm going through something with type 2 diabetes. I just got diagnosed. So he says, okay, how did you feel when you left that room? So he said, now read it like that. And when I read it, it came out. Now, three days later, I come to the call back. And every dude, I kid y'all not, I wish I could have had a picture. Every dude in that room looked, sound, walked, talked, and was built like Morgan Freeman. I was so situated, I called my manager. I'm in the corner like a little kid, calling my manager on the phone. I say, hey, did they call me back for the right project? Because these guys sound like Morgan Freeman. And I literally turned the phone to the room so she can hear them all talking. And I was like, oh, this ain't going to go well. This ain't going to go well. I'm the youngest person in the room. And literally, I walk in the room, the directors, the uh, advertising agents, the producers, the clients are there. And they all talking, and the director says the same thing. Yeah, man, you know, you're young, but Dave, um, go ahead and read. So I read, and then he said the same thing. He used I used his technique. He made me remember when was the first time I ever dealt with prostate cancer, and it was when my grandmother's great nephew, who we used to call Uncle Henry, had his testicles removed. And the light in his eyes, 
at 10 years old, I remember seeing him disappear. Because this mm. was a guy that turned me on about, you know, sex and all of that stuff. So, you know, he was that guy. He was that cool OG. You know what I mean? But to see that light go out of his eye and he had to walk around with that bag. And in less than 30 seconds, bro, I drifted back from, th I think I was 41 when I shot that. I drifted back to age 11. Just wow. like that. And when I read, they forgot all about them other old dudes. And when I got on set, that's the first thing they all said. We 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 saw you and you gave us such a con a commitment to it that the others didn't do. Even though they looked the part, they were the right age, you took it. And on set, that room that I'm in with the office where I'm reading, that's the exact same wall paneling that was in Uncle Henry's house before he died. So I'm triggered wow. all over again in the room. So that's why I call back my Morgan Freeman moment because, again, I'm connected to the casting director who's been watching me. I didn't know. And then, boom. You know what I'm saying? And that was – so ever since then, I ain't been right. <laughs> I ain't been right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I tell my students, if you don't leave exhausted, you didn't do it. <laughs> Awkward, stupid, or crazy. And Levita Davis is one of my students, right? That's my girl. She just got a commercial too with Fox, and she said the same thing. It didn't feel awkward, stupid, or crazy. It didn't feel right to me. I said, exactly. It must feel that way because you're not being yourself. That's the thing people forget. That's the number one rule that most of these entertainers forget. You're not being yourself when you hit that stage. Uh, my producer said, I like that he snagged the roles you don't normally uh, see people of color in. That's kick ass. Exactly. Really starstruck. So uh, two, on two levels, they weren't supposed to pick a young black man that was in good health, nor, matter of fact, no, I think they were going for the Morgan Freeman, but a lot of my earlier roles, and he's correct, a lot of the earlier stuff you see, I was supposed to be playing, they were supposed to be played by white men. Especially that last scene with the uh, in my acting demo where the girl's playing my wife and she's mm -hmm. talking. She was originally supposed to be talking to an older white man, but I took the role from him and they put him in another smaller role in the same piece. <laughs> <laughs> but that's 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 a testament to um, as an actor, just being prepared and delivering um on a promise that you can bring this character to life, right? So it, it didn't matter. Like you said, you, you went in and, and, and those people look completely different, but the fact that you won. No, I'm sorry, not to cut you off, but let me correct. Okay. I, I, I'm gonna say it again and it's gonna mess you up. Not as an actor, just as Dave sitting there as a fan who saw Morgan Freeman multiplied by 10. Okay. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. I have who no 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 but I no, 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 no. Oh, okay I'm here and and, and 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 I went in the room just like that with the stutter and everything. That's exactly what they got was a fan who just happened to forget he was a fan for about like 30 seconds. I forgot who I was. I just whew, I was just an eleven year old boy. That's it. So that's why I tell people, I don't like to say acting and it just comes with certain, you know, pretense. I just say, man, can you become a person? That's okay. why I tell all my students, become the person, not the character, not the gig, not the role, the person. If you can say person, then that means you built the person, like world building again. Just same premise, bro. So, I, I you know, I, 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 I had some questions for LaVita if, if she wanted to jump on i could put the link in the chat because i wanted to ask her some questions about the class and i'll wait for her to respond but in the interim i wanted to ask you a question because you said um becoming another person mm -hmm. how hard is it because i know a lot of actors take become someone else to do a role right mm -hmm. and then they some actors i've heard and behind the scenes stuff that they became that person for the duration of the project. And they were so profoundly affected by becoming that person that it caused a certain level of depression. Because I, I, you said earlier that you were a character actor, right? 
And so when you bring those characters to life, and as you mentioned earlier, it's about world building. So you not only build that person from the words that were given to you, but then you bring pieces of yourself that may have triggered you, like you said, and, and throughout your life. I won't just say childhood, but throughout your life. Hmm. And you start to bring those pieces together to bring out this completely new person. Do you find it hard as a character actor to come out of those roles? And how much of those characters do you carry with you moving forward? Well, you, you know, it's a great question, brother. And I, I got to thank you for that one because I tried to explain it in my class, but here's me doing it publicly. You said something that was very important. A lot of actors get there and they hold on even after the project. Well, that's because two things. They get locked in on the technical aspects of becoming that person and putting all that stress on themselves with the acting versus realizing one thing. And this is where being a fan works to my benefit. It's just pure imagination. That's it. It's the fantasy. Think about your favorite comic book. When you were reading it, did you not create voices in your head? Yes, that's what every book Okay. Every everything that I've ever read, I, you know, the pages on the book tell you or give you a construct or a framework, you fill in the blanks. Exactly. So it's the same premise to me. Like when they asked me to play the guy, <laughs> one of my first roles when I first started out acting was um, I had to play the, uh, what you call it, the protagonist at Santa Claus. Basically, I was a bad guy. Okay. But in the first scene, we all had to act like we sit on Santa Claus's lap. So I'm dressed in all black, and back then I used to wear my hair really long. I was the black Steven Seagal. That's we'll get into that later. But <laughs> I, 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 I am all black. I'm looking rough as shit. I'm the biggest person in the building, not the room, the building. And everybody got to sit on this guy's lap, and it was a big white dude. So I said, "What can I do opposite of him?" Now everybody else kept coming, saying, "I'm trying to act like they was kids." I went for the biggest, flamest gay man you can think of. Just imagine Billy Porter built like Shaq, and that was it. <laughs> and I just went, right? So in my head back then, it was RuPaul meet Shaq, right? And then <laughs> an hour later, we outside, and I'm showing him some stunt work on how to work his sword, and we battling back and forth, right? And right. everybody like, wow, man, wow. And I'm saying, again, my imagination. That's the saving grace for me because these characters are already, correction, these people are already living in me. And being a Gemini also helps because, again, it gives me the opportunity to gauge from the happy side and the angry and technical to the fun, fluid side that would be like, okay, let's just run with it, you know? And a lot of times I take that. And then my second gig was when I had to kill a kid with a mace in an abandoned hospital down in Richmond. Oh, yeah, and it was a beautiful shot. Mm. <laughs> I enjoyed it because I he's running and I'm <laughs> with the mace about like thirty wow. feet and flies through the air and <laughs> and the thing about it, they wanted the black version of the Incredible Hulk. Wow. Okay. So once again, hair out, long coat, mm. and they I scared the piss out of the camera guy because literally. Everything was from my imagination. I said, why wait on CGI and you know all that fancy stuff? I'm like, no, come in day one like it's day 33. So it saved me. go ahead. No, and it saved me that by that by that night when I had to grab the other black guy, because on two of us on the set, when I had to pick him up, it scared him too, because I picked him up so easily and was swinging him in the air like this, and he like. <laughs> and the girl's off camera screaming because she couldn't tell the difference. I said, I thought y'all said the, the Black Incredible Hulk. You know, <laughs> does when I watch the Incredible Hulk. It's a movie That's right. Hulk. Yeah. Right. Hulk yeah. ragdolls everybody. Right. And I, that's all I saw. So again, to answer your question, it's, it's difficult if you get stuck on technical aspects and you don't know. You don't know these type of people. That's where it's hard for actors to come out because now they got to dive deep into something that they don't know or they use a trauma like I just did one of my students and when LaVita come on, she'll tell you the same thing. And in both cases, both the women were crying. Same with one of my male students. He got really frustrated because he could not 
give this father figure essence because that's not what he had. But I didn't want him to feel ashamed for something that another man did. I wanted him to understand that emptiness and take that and formulate a relationship as if it was you playing the father to you. Play it back to yourself. And when he did it, it changed the whole dynamic to his performance. He made it his own. And that's where a lot of actors get lost. And that's why they had the trailers with the drinking and the so on, so on, so on, so Because trust me, they even ask me sometimes, do you need this and that? I'm like, nah, man. I'm already ready by the time I walked on set because I'm, I'm this person. I know this person already. I've seen this person in my life or I've been in this situation. So it doesn't take me much to get into it. It just, you know what I'm saying? Right. So Levita is backstage and, and I want to say thank you to her and I'm going to bring her in in a second. But I wanted to ask you another question because I heard you say this a couple times and I, I know you someone um, who just builds worlds. Right. And you're not an actor, but you mentioned technical mm-hmm. and I'm trying to understand um, are you classic? You, you said you weren't classically trained as an actor. No. So when you talk, when you speak to being technical as an actor, what are you referring to? When people say they went to the schools for this and they went to, uh, you know, some professor to do this, do that, and the third, because a lot of times these schools give you techniques and people really hang on to the technique more than the experience. So that's why when I do my thing, it was never from the school. Again, I tell people honestly, what got me interested was watching Michael Clark Duncan in the Green Mile. And for the first time, I saw a large black man that, give me your ID. No, we don't let you in. Or being so stressed when being like, yeah, 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 and just yelling for no reason. And being some swole dude walking around like, uh, uh. I said, damn, this brother's playing a socially inept person with the power internal, as well as his power external, because of how big he is, he could crush them dudes, but he ain't yeah. doing it. And some people say, oh, he played a dummy. I said, no, 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 no. If you watch closely, and I know people like this, he's playing a socially inept person. That means he's not good with mingling with people. He's not 100% matured into what he looks like to us. And that's what I took from the performance. And I said, that's the key. And those are the word I just used, performance. In my class, we don't act. I tell them all the time, you got two things when you hit that stage, real life and your imagination. When the two are apart, you're acting. The closer they are, the more you're performing. And when they intertwine, you're in a whole nother space, man. You living. So you're not even on the technical, you're just doing. Uh, that was pretty profound. Um, I- yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna have to get you to repeat. I'm gonna have to pull that out, and that's gonna be a clip. That's going Please. across the interweb. You, you, got that now? you got it. Okay, good. That was at the, we at the 54 minute mark. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, that that one there. Yeah, that was that was it right there. Yeah, that was 24 carat. Right. Exactly. I'm about to get in trouble with a lot of college professors because I just gave up the secret. <laughs> that, that they'll be okay. So I want to I, I want to bring in um and I know this is you know this wasn't planned but you know th- this thing about owning your platform and having all the control you pretty much do what you want. And 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 I know Levita is one of your students um and I'm not sure if she preferred Levita or Miss Davis. I'll ask her when she comes in. But I want to bring her in right now and have a discussion about you know her experience in your class and what she's learned. No, no. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, what do you prefer, LaVita or Miss Davis? Yeah, I'll be 57 soon, either or. LaVita is cool. (laughs) Oh, okay, LaVita. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you had no plans on joining us, but like I said, for me, it was important because I'm going to be honest, I want to take the class. I, I have Good. acting on my bucket list and I want to do a short film. And it's Ooh. so fortuitous because I talked to you know my producer about it earlier. Uh, Christine, you got to spell her name right, okay? 
but I'm sure she understands she, you showing her some love. It's okay. Uh, there's there's variances to the name. La vie, la vie is French. La Vita is Italian. La Vega is Spanish. So I answer to all of them. It's cool. Okay. <laughs> that takes a lot of pressure off a lot of us right now. <laughs> so how has it been taking the O's acting class? It is literally the difference between night and day. Prior to his classes, I would show up still in my head and it shows. It's one thing about the, the camera, you can't, you can't lie, you can't hide from it. So if you are going into something kind of shell-shocked or there's question marks, that's what you're bringing in. And even though we're doing a lot of uh, auditions on Zoom, that's what they're picking up. And he's also taught me, you don't have a lot of time to, to do it two, three, four, five, six, seven times that he allows in class for you to get there. When you're in front of a, ca a casting director, they, they're they gonna give you a slot of maybe 45 seconds. And if they see something else, they're gonna ask you to like, okay, can we try this or try this? And that's always a good sign. But um, the fact that I just booked something a couple of days ago, I, I immediately text him and said, oh, I'm retaining your information. I just got booked. So I highly recommend that you jump jump in and take his class it it's it's not just going to be uh acting it's going to be something that he taps into for you your spirit there's something that's going to be unleashed about you not just as an actor which i highly recommend all right so again if you don't leave the class crying or you or you or it doesn't oh, feel <laughs> So, so, so take, take me on an experience, right? Mm -hmm. What it's like to be one. And, and, and I'm going to ask this real quick, right? Because again, I, I, swear I swear I could be an actor and we don't have any scripts in front of us. And I want to do something that's impromptu, like mm -hmm. a scene with all three of us. We got to figure out how to do this live on the podcast because I've never seen that done. And at the biggest schools of podcasts, I pride myself on trying to be innovative and doing things I've never seen on a podcast. Hmm. Give you an example. Our co-host Top Flight was the first person I ever seen take a shit live on the podcast. Excuse the language, but he actually cut his camera off, went in the bathroom with the mic on, and took a deuce. He dropped a deuce. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. What, one of the other things we did that was pretty amazing is that it, there's this guy. You guys remember that show to catch a predator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in Pennsylvania, we have this guy. He is the Luzerne County predator catcher. And his, his tagline is got to catch them all. And what he does is he goes on these apps and he poses as young, underage boys and girls. And he catches them. He's, he, he, he lures them in to meet them somewhere, and when they show up, he pops out with the camera. And he asks him, who you here to see? He turns into the black Chris Hansen. It's, 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 it's phenomenal. Like I think it's insane and extremely dangerous, but he's caught 200 and something people in that county already. Wow. He's caught firefighters, high number. Officers, um, 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 government officials, all with a phone. That's all. He, that's all he uses is a phone. And he caught a predator live on our show one time. So again, the big exclusive podcast. We pride ourselves on like doing stuff for the first time. That this could exist somewhere. I just haven't seen it, so I'm claiming it. Right. So we're going to do some type of impromptu dialogue between the three of us. You know, uh, uh, Dave, since you know, Dave will give us, you know, who who we are, and then Levita and I'll build out our characters, and Dave, you'll start us off, and we'll do that. All right, so let's keep that in mind, Dave. Right, keep that in mind. We, oh, we're yeah. gonna do that, but I want to talk to Levita some more about. Um, Christine said, "I love it. We need more people out here catching these predators." Absolutely. Um, 
But so what brought you? You said you you get ready to turn fifty seven, right? Yes. So did you always have the acting bug, or did you catch it later on um, in life? I have always had the acting bug. I'm also also dabbled in singing. I remember back home, um, you know, something about our families when when we noticed someone going for our for their 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 full potential. There's something about our families have a tendency of trying to throw water on that purpose for whatever reason. And so I, I remember getting a, a, a an agency that back home, I'm from Miami, Florida. And I started doing uh, background work, but I was doing these national campaigns. I did Isotona gloves with Dan Marino. Um, uh, I, I was in a, a commercial that got an award. It was just, Universal Cyclovedia, you're exactly where you need to be. And then I did um, stand-in work for the Miami Vice, the series, my first time out for six days. And it was a collection of great things. And all of a sudden, I remember my the, the agent said, Levita, you are eligible for, for SAG work. And she didn't really, I didn't ask enough questions. I, I knew what it was, but I did ask enough questions. And back then it was $800, which is not the... Um, it's a lot more than 800 right now. And I remember asking my mom if she could help me and absolutely nothing. And I, it, it, um, it threw water on me. I just, so I put that down, but I, I returned back in uh, 2018 because when, you know, my, my parents passed away at uh, uh, 54 and 60. And that to uh -huh. me means that they, 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 they died with their dreams in, in, in still inside them. And so I feel like they're living vicariously through me as I return back to something I've always been kind of good at. So I remember uh, doing a lot of extra work when I came back here. I wanted to be on, I wanted to be on, um, uh, there were five shows. It was Law and Order. Uh, um, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> um, One of my pose, favorites. Pose, even though I probably wasn't, but it was the fashion. So work with me. Um, uh, Orange is the New Blacks. And I became a, a core member of Orange is the New Black. And I was so excited. I'm like, oh, my God, LaVita, yes. And I remember telling Dave, and he was like, that's cute and all, but you can't use any of this on your resume. And he's right. I mean, if you if you don't have dialogue, they're, they're, they're not going to take you seriously. Um, I did something with P uh, Spike Lee in 2019. I was a uh, featured extra so that I could use because I was able to look in the camera and, and have dialogue. But what he said to me was just, it was always in the back of my mind, like, Lavita, you're going to have to make a jump and work on your reel and take classes and uh, work on student films to build up that muscle to see what you need to work on, what are your strengths. And I was booking, but there was like a low and then, you know, maybe at the, the two, uh, two months ago when I took his class, what a difference. There was just something that I was able to retain that other, other student uh, teacher situations didn't stick with me. It's just something so human about how he approaches his classes. Um, we all have things that we can be triggered from but it's this approach to the way you do it doesn't leave you injured. And I'm just retaining it better. Again, I, I got I got booked to some from, to, uh, I won't say what it is, but it, I got booked recently and I, I have two, two lines in a national commercial that I've never had before. So uh, I, I'm gonna be taking another class uh, as soon as possible with him. Um, it is, it just feels like a, ah. that's what it feels like. I don't know what it is because again, prior to him, I would, I was getting some things, but again, I was showing up. No one was really pinpointing like LaVita, your, your eyes are dead. Um, what's going on with your spirit? What, what are you bringing to the camera? Because your eyes are dead. Your eyes are blink. You're, you're kind of fighting with yourself. And I know you have it. 
So he would just help me break these things down. So now when I get in front of the camera, I'm even if I don't book everything, all of my auditions are just stronger. I'm showing up. Even my agents are like, what's going on with you? I'm, there's something different. And I know it's David. So this, this question is for both of you guys. And then we're going to, Dave, I hope I gave you enough time to kind of set the scene and think of oh, something. He only needs a second. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, tell him again. He doesn't know. Tell him. <laughs> we do this all the time. As soon as you said it, he was like, um, okay. When she so, stops uh, talking, I'm gonna throw it at him. <laughs> so I gotta I gotta ask this question to both you guys because um, and then ladies first, of course. Levita, you'll go first. Um, but I I have an idea of what my dream role is, like the character that I want to play. Um Hi, Christine. Um, I have an idea of the character that I want to play. And I'm going to tell you because I want to know what you guys' dream role is. Wait, but minute, I did say wait, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh-uh. Go for it. No, no, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that in front of us, no, sir. What you're going to do is this. Do it and we'll figure it out. Hmm. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You don't know who you're in front of, sir. Oh, Lord. <laughs> And let All me right. be clear. Hold on. And let me be clear. In my class, we don't look for perfection. No. Okay. The attempt is much okay. more powerful than the dream. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Give me a second to gather my whole. Let me center myself. <laughs> let me breathe. <laughs> let me think about, you know, the character um, my sister. This is my sister. She says you could play Suge Knight in his autobiography. <laughs> I actually worked with the guy who did play Suge Knight. That's why I'm trying to tell you. I wow. my advisor is Sean Ringold, who played Suge Knight in the movie that Puffy and them produced. Wow! Look at so that. So Sean Ringold, he's a guy. He played Sugar in Luke Cage, hmm. and he's on Family Business right now on BET. So that's one of my wow. advice. So when she says that, I'm laughing because y'all just don't understand how close the world is to you right now. Oh, she said, or Rick, yeah, Rick Ross. Ross. <laughs> now that, yeah, he stole the role from me. Yes, yes. I want to hear that story, but first, Lavita, ladies first. I want to, I want to hear. You know, in 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 the perfect world, you got the role that you really wanted. What what's that character or what's that role or something similar? Like who would you love to play? Elise Keaton from How to Get Ooh, Away. How to Get Away with Murder. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, just looking at you, I feel like you would crush that. I feel like you would crush that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. See, she now, don't believe uh, me. I told her. She don't oh, believe me, bro. I've been telling yeah. her forever. She has that 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 presence, you know. That's what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, it's Viola, just the presence of what that character would require. She has this and, is her and, natural every day. And 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 I've 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 come in contact with maybe two other people or three other people that I feel like have that it thing, that presence, that like commands your attention even when they aren't speaking. Right? They walk into a room and you know that the energy has shifted in that room, right? So OG, I feel like, is one of those people. My, my homie, who's who's a rapper, uh, Jimmy, or Jumpman, he is another one of those people. Like, when he walks in, or OG walks into a room, it, it shifts. Hmm. And it, it, just like you on camera now, Ms. Davis, like there's a presence. Like I'm super excited that you you blessed us, you know, with your presence. So, David, what's what's that dream role? What's that character that you'd love to play? <laughs> I'm only laughing because Levita knows the answer. So do my students. There is none because I was never given that thought. I was always whatever came across the table. Mm -hmm. And so for the most part, a lot of stuff I've already done. Mm -hmm. Now, idealistically, I would say if somebody hired me to play Luther Vandross, because I get Luther Vandross a lot. And when I got my hair up in S-curl, I get Gerald Levert when I try <laughs> to sing some notes. Yeah. Um, 
but it was always a thing to do kung fu. So being a six foot six, three hundred some odd pound black man that has that twenty eight inch vertical and doing all this stuff, I was never going to give that opportunity because most of your actors are like five foot six, five foot eight, a buck seventy five to two hundred wet. So you know, I damn near kill them just doing a random thing. So that was never really a thing of mine. I just work, bro. I just love working. So again, being a character actor, you have the versatility and. I'm like Phil Lamar. Like Phil Lamar plays white characters. He is in incredible. Movie. So when I met him, and when we talked, I was like, "Yo, I, I get it. I get it. I get why he's the guy." Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he can play six different characters. In yeah, one his movie. his like, his voiceover work is immense as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so for me, again, anything that was kung fu related, I did my own production. I did mm. rough and rugged fighting. So I was before MMA came before this um what you call it? Uh UFC stuff came out. I was doing it from the street to the club scene and so forth. So you know what I mean? I've already done it. I wanted to play uh Toad from Five Deadly Venoms and I did it. I made my own movie. Whoa. We gonna get and into that. It, and then you just play the clip of me doing it on MTV. After 30 years of doing music and dance, here I come on MTV and I'm whooping ass. Did you say dance? Did you say dance? Dance. You know how I say love. <laughs> <laughs> no, no teachers, if you're not dancing, you must dance. <laughs> <laughs> you must learn how to dance and laugh at yourself. Laugh. <laughs> so here's what here's what I want to do. Because <laughs> our audience, at least our live audience, is very much a part of the show. Right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we 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 get a um. You making a camera shake, bro? Sit your big ass down. It's <laughs> like who is he talking to? I know. The producer. <laughs> oh, he got one. Okay, Paco agrees. Paco, like you need to bring the producer on camera or something. Right, exactly. I keep telling he needs a camera in him. I tell him that all the time. All the top <laughs> podcasters do it. Every producer sitting there with a camera on them. I mean, fresh and fit. Uh, Sway in the morning, uh, Breakfast Club, all of them got the producers sitting right there getting their time. You know what I, I mean? I don't know. One of these days, he, he's going to, he, because he, normally on the podcast, he's just in the background saying random shit and it's hilarious. And I'm like, dude, stop talking if you're not going to put the mic in front of you because it's gold or it's informative or it's educational and people never get to hear it. And we react into what he's saying. And people are like, you guys are weird or crazy or something like that. But the point I was getting to is the people who are watching right now, and if you're listening and you shared the stream, I appreciate you guys. And I want to make sure um, they are a part of this as well. So I know you already have something, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you like this. Mm -hmm. I want to play a bad guy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Um, and I want the audience to start throwing out places and things, and we kind of got to incorporate that. Now, you guys got to be quick about this, right? The show is live. We don't have a lot of time. We can't do any dead air, right? That's the podcast killer, dead air. So you guys got to be quick about this. Throw out some locations, throw out some things that or that we're doing. Um, anything you want, you got about five minutes because I'm going to ask them another question about time. They're done answering this question. I need to have all the suggestions in the chat so that I can put them on screen and, 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 and Dave can put the, put it. Cause I know he already had something, but I know he's good enough to formulate your suggestions because I want it to be random. I don't want people to think because they'll think that, right. They'll think later on. Oh, they already planned that out. They already passed notes and all of that. Nope. No. But no. if it comes, she's telling, you, she's telling you no, and I'm telling you no, not from the technique that I use. You okay. would have never known it, but they would believe your performance because where we come from mm -hmm. is what you already do. Right. Okay. Awesome. That's the magic of improv when it's done right. All right. So, because you know the beginning, you know the end. The journey is what's more important. Put the suggestions. Places, other people, things, 
uh what are we doing an activity anything so here's the question christine she says i missed the question i missed the question yeah. mo better right. blues <laughs> you see that you see that mo better blues, mo better blues. so, Ooh. so here, here, here's what's happening here's what's happening <laughs> Our, 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 you know, our, our featured special guest, David, is going to put a scene together. I'm going to have a role. Levita is going to have a role. He is going to have a role. I need you guys to suggest places and things or activities or whatever you got. You got, I'm going to give you three minutes because I've been explaining this for too long already. Cause I, I have to ask them a question while you guys place your suggestions in the comments and then once we get all the suggestions, I'm going to put them on screen and then he's going to put it together. He's going to put the scene together and each one of us are going to play our role. I'm excited and scared to death at the same time. Now, Good. keep in mind, I haven't taken his class yet. OK, and I, pl I plan to, but I haven't taken it yet. Right. You know, you're so, doing it now. OK. All right. I'm taking the class now. Yes. So let me ask you this while they drop their suggestions in. And family, don't make me look crazy, okay? Drop them suggestions. Hurry up, okay? Drop those suggestions. Don't make me look sorry, crazy. I'm still more better blues. I'm sorry. Mo better. You still on more better blues? Yeah, uh, because I was actually channeling the scene with Denzel that's playing against Wesley Snipes, and the movements that he had in that was so proficient mm -hmm. that his lip text, the way he formulated his lips around the piece, the mouthpiece against Wesley's, he looked more believable with the mouthpiece. Than Wesley did, but Wesley's mm -hmm. finger movements. Right, were on it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They were fluid. So his Kung Fu, his martial arts came into play. Coffee oh, shop what? interviewing for erotic film. <laughs> Say again. You saw that? Coffee shop interviewing for an erotic film. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. I got you. We can do that shit right now. <laughs> I give Levita a cue, and Levita's going to be the lead. Okay. All okay. right. You ready? Indecent proposal at a bar. <laughs> same premise. It's the same premise. All right. I'm so one here it is, folks. We're going to do it now. Okay, He's going to give us our role. Okay. No. My sister says, bro, you could be a shady drug lord stationed in South Philly who turns his back on crime because you fell in love with a stripper. Damn. Oh, <laughs> Guess what? We that might be a good short film. Wait a minute. That's we going to connect the dots. Let me show you how to connect what they just both said. Here we go. All right. I'm going to give you both one song and let the song play through your head the entire time as we're doing it. Y'all ready? You ready, Biggie? I'm ready. All right. The song is Adore by Prince. Oh, Lord. You remember Adore the song? Adore by Prince. Adore by Prince. Mm-hmm. Adore you. Tell you what you mean to me. Baby. Just let that play through your head. Just that baby to high wonder. Just let all that play, right? Now, okay. Levita is going to be the casting person, the older, mature lady who sees two young strapping men. We both coming in. You're KD, short for King Dingaling, right? You want that role. You know you're the young buck. I'm the OG. I'm Long John Silver coming in that jump. And we both got to tell her how we're going to do it. But she's the one with the sweet pussy juice that's going to let us know we got it now. So we got to make her moist. Oh, now, man. as Shit. that transcends, the character that we're playing, the character we're trying to play is the ex dub dealer who's now trying to come a pimp in South Philly. Holy shit. Here's a clue for you. Come from what you know of porn stars and real live drug dealers. You ready? LaVita, here's your cue. The game. How you approach that one. You ready? And hashes, who's ever first? We in the coffee shop. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you. Hey, lady. Good afternoon. Hey, what's up, love? So I'm looking for just one, just one dancer, just one, one particular energy. I, what you got for me? I want to feel it. By the time you over, I want to, I want to jump on top of you and fuck you. 
baby girl, you ain't got to say nothing. This young buck don't know nothing about slinging no dick. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you how I do it back in my day with the Southern Swing, baby. That Southern comfort ain't just a drink. It is your man. <laughs> I get the long john stroking, and the color in your eyes go from brown to silver. Because, God, you done seen the stars, baby. Talk to them, baby. They don't know what time it is. Let me get the pussy wet. Oh, head, if you don't get the fuck on away from here with that bullshit gang, this dick head like cocaine, that shit sell itself. You looking for a real ride, a rough ride? Baby, just get on top. Shift it like a stick shift, like it's in manual. Forget this little slip, sipping on circ type nigga talking that Cosby kid rhyme. He don't got nothing for you, baby. Your audience needs the mature guideline. See that wave in there? The motion in the ocean and shit? The ladies love that. And look at these luscious lips. He act like he know what time it is. He don't know about slinging no drugs. You know he don't what, know about cocaine. You know what, gentlemen, what y'all both are missing is uh, I want to I wanna feel it. Not just you popping back and forth and be feeling your balls. I want to feel it in my heart, my spirit, my soul, my mind, not just my pussy. I want to feel all of them, all my chakras. Go. Listen here, mamas. I put this motherfucker in you. If it ain't already touching your heart, the way I whisper in your ear as I stroke it will. OG ain't got nothing on a young stallion. My back's still strong and it's long. If you choose me, Forget the motion in the ocean. Like I told you earlier, I want to take you on a journey. We can start out slow. We can start out sweet. But at the end of it, all women like that rough ride. I, I'm sorry. You had me feel it in your heart and your soul, like Lionel Richie say, and got my nipple hard. So um, I'm a little lost and flustered right now. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm feeling moist on the inside. So, uh, but the most important thing is I'm not feeling moist. So what y'all doing? Uh, I just told you I'm I want to feel I'm, I'm, all of it. I want to feel. I don't want just. How are you going to connect here, here, and there? I'm listening. Well, let, let me ask you a question. You ever had a strong, strapping young man? Freeze. Big E. Pay attention to the swing she just gave you. She just gave you a swing. Okay. Now catch on and see how you can redirect the vibe that you're giving. You saw what I did. Now catch it again. She just said here, here, and here. Okay. How would you respond to an older chick giving you some, mm? You ever had a moment where a chick chumped you up? Take that moment and ride it. Here we go. She just gave it to you. Here here and here she double tapped there Ooh. give give it give it to me again give it to me again <clears throat> oh, no. here my heart and there so they're all very important i can't just show up for you in my pussy i need it in my brain in my heart and that connects and starts it off down there go for it Hmm. Has it been that long, sir, since you've connected with a woman? Because you are more than just your dick, sir. You are much more than that. Mm. I told you. Y'all just don't know what to do, baby. You know, I, you, 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 you got me. You know what I'm saying? Like the song say, you got me hanging on screen now you know what i'm saying not to play thing you know what i'm saying no, you're, saying still, you're still dancing around too i mean how are you going to get to my head my spirit and the pussy the pussy is the last thing you should be concerned about because you got to fix it here and you got to fix it here ma'am you are right i am more than just a dick you both and I see that so, you, I see that you need to be stimulated, mind, body, and soul. Oh, okay, okay. So, here's what I want to ask you: What was the last book you read? The Alchemist by Paul Coelho. The Alchemist. 
you ever had sat and had a full-fledged conversation about the alchemist over dinner freshly prepared by me and what are you as i massaged your feet stop what are you preparing something simple let's let's go with some crab cakes sauteed asparagus (laughs) some mashed potatoes and the little you know garlic butter on the side you call that cooking boy that right. woman need to get her heart and soul you need to get him some hog moss some fat back with the college the extra some... vinegar and the jalapeno pepper talking about that that man, crab cake. What is that? boy you trying to make her lose weight that's a woman right there ain't no child excuse me no i've man. never had chitlins and i'm not gonna start now Hog mall? Did you say hog malls? Uh, yeah, that's no, good. So my grandmother gave me that shit. That's how you get to move my heart, baby. The good cooking. Yeah. The good you, don't, cooking. you don't stop my heart, honestly. I mean, really? No, OG. I you you, you don't went too far. She needs, she, needs ah, she, needs ah, she needs something elegant, something, something tasteful, right? right? Something that's going to tantalize her taste buds. All right, now. You know what I mean? So let's try this. We'll, we'll flip the meal on its head. Cut, 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 cut. No, no, just freeze for a moment. Now, real quick, what do you think you did right? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I don't Levita, think I did anything right. Wait a minute. Levita, would you like to tell him? You did because you 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 started to... Uh, what's, uh, uh, not contradict what David was saying, but you you start your your brain was like, okay, you know what? This kind of hidden and quitted is not gonna hit is not gonna work on her. I need to I need to connect with her as a as another spirit. You you just started to paint something instead of like I'm gonna show up with my dick in my hand. Mm. And see that's scary thing, as fuck. Why like, that's scary? No, wait, 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 wait. Here's the real question. Why did you come in with that tone? Why? What made you think, okay, let me go against this dude? Because hmm. it, it felt like it was me against you, and I had something to prove. Hmm. So you never been to an audition before? Never. You never done porn before? Never. <laughs> I have done both. Now, with that being said. Well, wait a minute. You I just know, like- gloss over that like that? <laughs> it's a part of my career, baby. It's part of the journey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've done stuff for people that was like, oh, okay. I directed, I've written, I've filmed. It's all the same. Right. But it's the point of what you were doing was coming from your real life. Your instinct kicked in to say, okay, now it's me versus Dave. Dave was coming across like an old school slick talker, right? Because the girl said, the guy that's on the corner slinging drugs trying to come out of it. You know what I'm saying? So what would he do? So I said, thinking LaVita was going to do what she normally do. See, LaVita didn't do what she do, which lets me know she just did something right. LaVita normally, because of her comfort zone, every character she plays always has a Southern accent. (laughs) This is the first time she came out of nowhere, straight, raw, no Southern accent. Because when I told her to do the game, She played a role in the game. They wanted her to play a more sassy, mature, but very vibrant, alluring older woman. Talking to one of the guys that owned the team. But LaVita, like she said, she's going to turn 57, but the character was 72. Mm. And I said, did you ever see Who's the Boss? Remember that TV show? Yeah. Okay, remember the mother, Mona? The mom, yeah. yeah. Mona. So that show, and then to bring it more up to date for your audience, Mike and Molly. The mother on that show. Ah, yeah. And even more for your audience who may be of Caucasian descent or country music, Reba. Mm-hmm. When Reba McIntyre had her show. You see? So when I told LaVita, how you could have got hired was had you acted it out like somebody you know. And she said, her aunt, right? Mm-hmm. Would you care to show him that real quick? Your aunt Ashley talking to a sexy young man? How you doing, Colin? It's good to see you. You know, I haven't been out on a night like this since my husband passed away about two years ago. It's nice. I thank you for 
thank you for inviting me tonight. You know, um, I met him. We were we were exercising. We have a little group, the elders. We do a little stripping. I know it sounds funny, but um, that's what we do. And he was our instructor, and we gets down, and it's fun. I'll do what I can on my cane. <laughs> But uh, I, I wanted to let you know that he is just an incredible young man, a young man that you should have on your team. He's strong. He shows up. He's responsible. I wish my granddaughter would, would marry him because he is just extraordinary. So what you say? You got some room for him? So what she gave you was the good news. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to stay. That's right. Fire. And when I did that audition, I hadn't taken his classes yet. So now everything that I've gone through, I, I'm just retaining and having fun, stepping out of my having fun. This is the business that you have to you have to show up. And that's the thing about acting. We always think, oh, what do they want? They want to see you. They just want to see you confident, playful. It could be completely wrong, but what's gonna what what's gonna leave an impression on them is this person's comfortable being themselves. How do you become comfortable with yourself? And you did that as the piece went along because you started playing opposite of me because you really wanted to get LaVita's attention and say, hire me to play this big dicks porn star. Because <laughs> your tone was just that. You were starting to describe a genuine dinner. I was waiting for James Ingram to come on behind you because you started talking some old RP shit. I'm like, this nigga that's going to tell me pentagrams or Come and go. <laughs> Come on over to my place. Yeah. <laughs> Would you do that, baby? <laughs> you know, so I was just waiting for you to woo on me. I'm like, oh, he about to go there. Okay. <laughs> but that's what, see, that's where you got to understand. You didn't get caught up in the technical aspects of acting. Had I let you get trained the other way, you would have. Because yeah. you would still be saying that doubtful thing you're saying. My student this weekend I worked with, she said the same thing. She even told me in front of everybody on set, but it was before she did her scene. She said, taking your class has deterred me from acting. I said, what? She okay. said, no, no, no. You should take it as a compliment because that's the thing, that's a credit to you showing me where my passion really lies, mm. right? Because of what she went through with her husband, her ex-husband and her mom and all this other stuff with other people doing acting around her. She just like you. Never really thought, oh, I can step 100%. But when I showed her that one scene, and I told her it was going to change the whole dynamic to her film. Well, lo and behold, it changed the whole dynamic to the entire crew and everybody in her house. We're talking her friends, her family, and her colleague within less than, like, I showed them one scene how to slam the door in the guy's face. They changed. They saw what I was bringing. Then when she came downstairs and did it, dude, everybody, whole place just shifted and i told them don't applaud yet because i made her do the scene a second time mm -hmm. and just like levita told you it takes you there but when you've done it's like therapy mm -hmm. so it's that opportunity to release so if you've never had a chance have you ever stepped to an older chick before uh yeah close your eyes and run it back now how do you feel as you see in her talking to you. Yeah, it's it's a certain level of shyness there. Hmm. Right. And intimidation. But yet you still talking to her, right? Right. Why? Because she's letting you do it. Right. Absolutely. She's giving you that license to come in further. Right. And you and you're taking it, am I right? Yeah. Keep your eyes closed and still see her, brother. Okay. You see her. Yeah. Do you remember what she smelled like? To the best of your ability, do you remember it smelling good? Yeah. Do you remember wanting to touch her? Yes. Now, when you open your eyes, all I want you to do is remember that woman, and I want you to say this line right here. How will you feel? Hey, Miss Davis. Okay. But you got to see her, though, this woman you speak of. You got to smell her. And remember that feeling that she gave you when she let you talk to her. Do you remember it? Open your eyes and say, hey, Miss Davis. Hey, Miss Davis. 
Good evening. <laughs> oh shit! When the next class start? <laughs> when the next class start? Exactly. God damn it! You Mama just got it. Face belongs on the tizzle. <laughs> you just got it. That's can what I, I tell everybody. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, baby. Go ahead. May I share something? So when I was, um, I got, I got booked. So uh, Wednesday, I had to get up at two in the morning. Mm -hmm. Get the four o'clock uh, train into the city. I'm in Long Island. Uh, I walked from um, Penn Station to Union Square, and it was very cold that morning. The the, the 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 transportation van was very late, so I'm standing there in the cold. They they eventually come and get me, but peep this: my my actual call time was not until two thirty. So I was there all day. And I was the second to the last scene. They told me exactly what they wanted to do. And I'm again, I'm tapped into what I've learned with David. It doesn't matter if I was there for 27 hours. As soon as they said, LaVita, we want you to say this, like this, as, 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 as long as the day was, we did it three, three different ways and then we were done. And mind you, I got hugs, apologies, handshakes from the director crew, various people of the crew, and they Ubered me home. Nice. Again, in my classes, you get audition techniques, networking techniques, and acting techniques. Those networking techniques are very, 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 very important. But back to you, my brother, how do you feel just now just saying just those two words to her? You know what? It, it it felt in a sense the fear went away. Hmm. And I felt a lot more confident in saying it. Exactly. Now hold that right there. What if I told you that was worth $1,500? Hmm. Just say those two words. Sign me up. That is what we face. This is what we face. This is why I told her Doing an extra work is good, but don't be a thirsty person. Be the person on set studying what the stars, the directors, the PAs are doing because it increases your performances. It makes you better because now you're aware of what they mean when they say this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead, Levita. When you said that, so they all know that they kept coming up to me, Levita, we're so sorry that you've, it's, it, you're, you're coming, you're coming. But one of the, the ADs, like Levita, um, I'm like, you know what? It's okay. I've been I've been observing. I've been meeting some great people. Um, I'm excited with a new client, and I've had. I mean, it's it's been taxing. We are human. Getting up at two in the morning is a little. It's a lot. And walking out in at the, in the dark. I mean, I'm I don't feel unsafe because I like walking. I'm I'm fine with that. I'd rather be up above ground and be on MTA. I mean, down at the bottom. I'll walk. <laughs> But the fact that because I was professional and they are all watching me, like, how is she going to crack now? Is she going to throw a chair at somebody? Is she going to curse somebody out? I could have because it was a long day. I didn't. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you, gentlemen. It was a pleasure meeting you. Handshakes, hugs, and we're going we gonna to get you home. So it's just like you're always on. You're don't it does you think you're around the corner, peek the no, somebody is walking by listening to your conversations. Somebody's always watching. Somebody is yeah. always watching and listening. Not that I wasn't sharing my early days, but it wasn't unprofessional. Right. It was always like still upbeat and somebody will come in and I'm like, "Wow, okay, it's a pleasure to meet you." Uh I, I bonded with the, the the makeup artist and the, the hair the hairstylist and the wardrobe person. It was always just thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. It was, but it felt good again because again, when you're coming from extra work and then you're starting to get bookings for you know you uh, independence, you you want to do national stuff, and it's a very different world. I was we we were talking about that when I got home, like. The, the, the food was extraordinary. <laughs> we can talk about that. Everybody, you know, when I got off the train to go upstairs at Penn Station, some man just grabbed my 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 suitcase and just took it upstairs. So he was preparing me for what I was going to get the whole day. Everyone was like, "Oh no, Miss Miss Davis, I'll I'll get that for you." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> sign me up for this every okay." Right. 
we like these kinds of jobs that people just have some grace, some some just some grace. I'll take that for you, Miss. It was it was delicious. I'm like spoil me with this. I okay. I've got to get back. Um, to that. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Is it two Christines or one Christine? It's two. It's two. Here, right? it's it's two. two. We have Christine Kane and Christine Reynolds. Miss Reynolds is the one with the, her job on. Yes, that's my sister. Let me tell her. Um, mm -hmm. One of the girls on my team, fan of the stardom, she is a Muslim as well, practicing devout Muslim. And her and her husband make all my custom made outfits that you guys yes, see because yes. they're into cosplay and all that stuff. So they designed the outfits for me. And she would tell you, she's going to be on today, that we helped her in over the last three years build up her business as a costume designer. And now she wants to do all the modeling. And people have become fans of hers. And they draw her. So I always say that to people who have a particular religion or some type of uh, lifestyle that people try to say you can't do certain things when it comes to entertainment. Yeah, you can. You can still be represented and still mm -hmm. do your thing. And yes, grab your husband and your kids and just play around. Reenact. I'll give you a scene to reenact. Reenact the scene from the Cosby show. <laughs> Trust me, it's a great foundation for a family. And if not that show, Malcolm in the middle. It'll be a stretch for you. And to the other Christine, yes, I see you at the coffee shop, baby. Valentine's Day is over and I ain't got nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. You're welcome. Bro. Um, said night and day. So I, I, I will, I will say this to you, Levita. Um, I've, I've, my, my livelihood is as an entrepreneur, right? And when you meet people, when I meet people, um, she said, great idea. They'll do the uh, Cosby show. Um, and Miss Kane got, you know, a wink and a kiss for you. I don't know what that means, but okay. Because <laughs> baby, don't play. <laughs> I pay for people's rent. <laughs> Let me get that light right. I pay people's rent, baby. <laughs> yes! <laughs> she wasn't ready for that. She like this dude has got me moist through the camera, baby. Go ahead now. I'm a big, big exclusive podcast follower. <laughs> hey, hey, Christine can come on if she wants. I yeah, don't want man, man, ask questions. Hey. I don't care. Christine Kane or Reynolds can come on if you guys have questions. Come the through, link, ladies. The link is still starred. Oh, look at this. My other sister is here, Catherine. They're they're fraternal twins, Christine and Catherine. Oh wow. Oh, yeah, they're fraternal twins, my twin sisters. Um I just got I couldn't to ask for a better Austin, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I couldn't ask for, for better sisters. You know what I mean? Yeah, tell, tell me, come on in. It's a family. Oh, look at that. Oh, you got the well, Christine, the link. You know what, tell Christine? Christine, stop playing. I'm gonna make Shoot it easy shot. for you. I'm gonna make it easy for you. I'm gonna pop the link in again, and if if you you feeling froggish and you want to leap on in, come on in. We just talking, having a conversation. Oh wait a minute, uh, she might be one of them private ones. It's the same thing on all platforms. David the O T H E O H. It's all one big word, and they come together. Look, big bro, just getting all this love. <laughs> but what I started to say and what I was alluding to, and, and, and when Christine Kane comes in or whichever Christine comes in, um, what I was alluding to, Levita, it was that as an entrepreneur, I come across so many different people every day um, for whether it be business or as, you know what I mean, a customer or delivering. And the ones who stick out to me always are the ones who are very, very cordial very polite and have some level of understanding and i remember those people and what it does for me is because they still respected the fact that it might have been a glitch or i might have been a little bit late or they might have been late and i still respect them but the ones who maintain you know that demeanor i always end up you know trying to go the extra mile for them simply because um, I appreciate them, you know what I mean, having that that type of temperament. So it goes a long way. And like you said, you just never know who's watching and who may be in a position to put you in position 
on something national that they're a part of. Like, hey, I, you know, I did makeup and hair for this for this lady. I think she'd be perfect for it. You know what I mean? If they have the air of the casting director, the director, or even the AD, yep. or a producer, like any connection, like because. You know, I hear that all throughout business. Your network is your net worth, right? So you yeah. always want to make sure you're building bridges and not burning bridges. Burning them. It's the, it's the big difference. Yes, absolutely it is. Um, I'm not sure, Christine, she's taking her time. Uh, look at this. Look at this. She didn't, you didn't, scared, you didn't scared her away, David. She said, hey, no. <laughs> Baby, let me tell you, that's the best time for a brother like me. See, I'm around models, dancers, and singers all the time. And I tell women all the time, like, don't, don't, when you're sick, the man that'll be around you when you're sick and you ain't pretty, that's the motherfucker. That's me. I don't like being around a woman where everything got to be picture perfect, perfect all the time. Because, damn, that means your fart going to stink more. Because for some strange reason, my brain, the prettier the woman, the more I think she stinks. Oh, my God. Damn. Wait a minute. Her, her, her diet could be all right now. Wait a minute. I, but I just don't. Don't ask me why, man. It's just, it just, Damn. I've been around a lot of beautiful women. And let's just say, okay, is a nice way of saying what was there. Well, Miss Kane said, I'm absolutely gorgeous. And her. that's what I'm saying. Let okay, me see the girl. natural, Christine. I don't yes, need queen. no fancy Come on, lights, let me see it. Makeup. Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. Kayla might come on through. Kalia, Kalia, Miss Strong, how you doing, Miss Strong? Right, Miss Strong. I see you, Goddess. I'm also naked. Oh, okay. girl, she. the show. Okay. You know, uh, 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 uh. she better be glad we on the show because that's normally what I be doing. Maybe I should leave. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, I think me and you it's time for you and I to go. I think so. Right? I think it's, it's curtain call for me and you. Right, girl, I, this is uncomfortable. This is a monkey suit. I wouldn't be. You crazy? It's a Friday night too, girl. Please, I'll be button making counts in my checks, baby. What you talking about? So no, girl, you better find me on Instagram at David the O. Stop playing. Look for the angry man doing this here. <laughs> <laughs> On Facebook, it's all the same, all about the branding. Don't do that. Good morning to you. <laughs> Come on, ladies. I can't be the only one. Have a little balance. Uh, don't worry about it. They are. Right. They scared. They scared. Right. Yeah, but most of the time, you know, uh, I'll say this. Um, I found when I'm doing the podcast, there's, there's always a ton of criticism. Mm -hmm. And um, I always like invite people to come on. Uh, there's a, a someone's giving you Christine about the city, David, and then David's got a whole new different casting call going on. I see you pitching woo on the job, <laughs> and she's giving it again, Christine about the city. Find <laughs> me. Find on Instagram. All right. Okay. Don't 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 let Big E send the shit to me. Look, Levita, tell her. Remember we had the same conversation? Because dog, there's two two negatives to what I do. That's why Levita would tell you. Because me and her been having this conversation for a while. One is out of all the people I talk to, bro, only three percent, three percent makes a difference. They and they make moves. They at least make an attempt. 1% actually elevates to the next level. That's sad, bro. When you see how many people I talk to, how many people I've been around, right? And I always say that. And then number two, the other drawback is that these women seem to think it's a shit ton of women because I talk this shit like this. But any of my female friends like LaVita and all that, because like, you know, they'll tell you when they meet me, it's a total different energy from the O. That's why it's David, the O. By the time you learn my real last name, you're like, oh, that was his name the whole time. Hmm. He just never said the whole name. And that's why I tell women, I'm a simple man by design when you get away from the O or the Ol David Oliver. Those are two separate entities. There's three. Somebody's shy now? Mm. It happens. Oh, me being shy? No, never that. No, uh, Miss Reynolds. <laughs> I feel like I'm behind the wall, don't you? Um, excuse me, what's your your name? 
uh, Shannon or Big Shannon. Exclusive. Thank I've just been calling him Big E. So. Okay. <laughs> It sounds more potent when I say Big E, the big exclusive. You cannot handle it. Welcome to the big exclusive podcast. There's your second that like. sound like. You heard you got that? Okay, good. <laughs> That's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Girl, don't let it for me. Oh, I'm not this way off camera, baby. I that's why I'm not in here by myself. Me and Paco be talking. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. My bedroom is colder than your freezer. <laughs> I get a lot of past, past, what you call it? I don't say transgressions, but let's say women from the past be like, oh, I remember the good times. Keep singing the song over there, baby. I, got, I, I can't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need to update current news. You know what I'm saying? Predictions to the future. It's just been difficult, bro. And I, like I tell everybody, back to the point of what we've been talking about, at the level I'm currently at with my career, it's a love-hate thing. Hmm. Oh, you're welcome, Miss Kane. Um, it's a love-hate thing because I love meeting new people. <laughs> I love helping people like... Um... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't she just say she was married? Look, girl, call when your girlfriends. Don't be playing, y'all. Y'all playing. <laughs> Stop playing with my heartstrings. I just asked some people to do that. Let me tell you my rule. I don't date... If I, if I ain't with somebody between before October 30th, then I ain't messing with nobody until February 15th. Why? Because I'm an emotional person when it comes to romance. I'm a hopeless romantic. I love rom-coms, and I, I embody those guys. I'm that goofball that does that weird shit, embarrasses in front of everybody to confess his love, and then he spends most of his money <laughs> going around the country <laughs> trying to prove it. I'm that dude. So that's why I don't mess with nobody that with February 15th. <laughs> oh, my shit, girl. It, it, it turned into love connection. It has. It has. It's become a okay hey. stupid slash. Uh, what's that one that slashed to the right? Oh, uh, Tinder. <laughs> you can tell I'm on it. What's that thing that slashes to the right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have no social life. I'm just trying to remember what they are. Okay. Oh, God. Well, yes, May 29. Ms. Reynolds. But you shy. I know you fucking lying. All right. All right, ladies. What? What? Uh, uh Miss Miss Reynolds. Hey yo. <laughs> love and flip my pop. <laughs> we got something here. Let's run with it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They ain't seen the show, dog, where I'm on the um reality show Bad Girls Road Trip when they came to Baltimore. Oh God, bro! Every woman that's I, now I get when women say men look at their cleavage when they're talking to them because every woman who saw me on that show was all in my mouth, bro. It was hilarious. Everywhere I went, they said, "Were you on that show on Bravo?" Yeah, really? What? So what was the show about? They just wait for my tongue to flip out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was. Why do you wait to come on camera, Miss King? Come on camera. She's right. she she want to save it for me. They don't have any makeup. They asked me to come, and I put my lights up, and bam. No, she says she's naked in the bed. She want to save that for me. She's waiting for this to be over, and she's going to find me in my DMs and be like, "Hey, oh, what's what? up?" And I'll be like. What's up, sis? I'm naked too. Oh, she wants to <laughs> wow. Girl, let's turn the lights off. Just you be sexy. Do Donna Summer. Like Donna's people don't know Donna Summer originally laid like, I don't on the care floor. About makeup. Oh, damn, Miss Harris. Okay. So why you ain't hitting the link? Now I'm gonna post this link one more time, Christine. No, get you know on in here know? now. I'm gonna tell her something. We created this is our, a love uh, net. Let me tell y'all something. This is our Donna fun fact. This is how Donna Summer re recorded that song, um, Love to Love You, Baby. She laid on the floor in the studio yep. and brought the mic down to her, baby. She did that whole thing on the floor and she was that. in bed. Yep. So that's how she won with a classic. You listen to that opening of that song, that's all her in the bed. That's talking about world building, son. Next level. Donna hey. Summer. So, so real quick, because I, I need this to be a sound, too, because I want him to cut this out, and we want to get this posted on social media. When does the next class start? Um, I'm working with my man, Tim Craggett. Um, We're going to design a course to where, like, say, the many people, because he's like, Dave, when we did Otacon together, he was like, it was really cool. So I want to start again, uh, what's this, February? 
I probably saw it again um, mid March, like around about that third week of March. Pick it up, and I do Friday and Saturdays, and we do one hour per week. Um, it's an acting intensive, so when you come, we're going to practice without a reader because I don't want you getting comfortable trying to do stuff like you would when you're doing Zoom and you got twenty thousand takes and all like that. So pretty much mid March is the acting intensive with Dave Theo. Um, I'll have it all posted uh, as soon as he and I get done working out this uh, syllabus so the many can take it. And if you want to get a custom class with me one on one for an hour, then you have to pay three hundred dollars. And that's a four week thing. OK, good. You got that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Go ahead, David. Sure. David, that you didn't mention uh, my <laughs> aversion to saying nigga. <laughs> you didn't bring up Atlanta in my. You tell I the story. I was I was gonna wait because I'm gonna let him finish that what he got to say because when we tell this story, it's gonna make him and everybody laugh. Even his yep. producer is gonna have to get on camera because they don't they don't know you, so they don't they don't understand the significance of how you can't say the word properly. She can't say the word nigga properly, dog. <laughs> she can't. She she we we went to Atlanta, and this is the thing. A friend of mine uh, that left Baltimore, moved to Atlanta, told me I'd come down there. I had like some time off from my job. And he said, come on down. So I said, I want to hang out some people. I contacted my cousin, some old classmates from high school, and Levita. Because Levita had just left Baltimore. And we met through a mutual friend that was a DJ. Um, and she was helping Levita make the transition from what she was doing from music into entertainment. And she had told Levita to follow me. And I hadn't met her yet. But I met her before she left. We hung out a couple of times. I dug her energy. And then when I got to Atlanta, we hanging out. So we at this guy's house. He's talking all the stuff about wanting to play Suge Knight. She's talking about what she wants to do. I do an improv with his girlfriend because he's trying to do one with LaVita. And I said, let me show you how to do it. So in the midst of it, we all talking. And then the next day, me and the two guys are in there talking. LaVita comes in the room. And out of nowhere, she just says the word nigga. Now, you heard how I just said it, right? But she comes in and goes, nigga, it's, it was hilarious. <laughs> she started the whole conversation. The three of us, three street dudes just went like, what you say? <laughs> right? And then we go out and everywhere we went in downtown Atlanta, I swear to you, we made her stop and say the word. The Spanish girl was cracking up. The Spanish cook came out the back, was cracking up. We took her to T-Mobile. They were stuck on stupid. We took her to <laughs> the older black ladies like, what is her problem? They just could not figure out why she could not say this word right. It's only two ways to say it, but she said it the third way and nobody could comprehend, bro. Everybody was like, what is she saying? You know, so it, it, it was just too funny. So wait, so wait, Levita, I got one for you. I got one for you. Please, and man. we and we got some. We got listen. I got one for you, right? <laughs> Color purple. Color purple. You remember that line? Till you do right by me, nigga. You got it. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right, we going in five, four, three, two, action. Until you do right by me, nigga, nothing you do is going to be right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. See, she's been practicing. No, forget that. She's been practicing what I taught her. See, she wrong. She, she, no, that just lets the people know no, that the class is worth it. No, let her just say the word by itself. Okay. Just let her say the word. Just say the word by yourself. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Nigga. <laughs> See, always show me a nigga. <laughs> up, Listen, my father, my, father, my father brought me up really formal flashcards at two, three, four, reading the paper to him at five. There was just certain words I was not allowed to say. He has passed on, and I, I still feel him like, so I it comes out in the eyes. Your father was a great man. He N was a nigga, great man. nigga, nigga. It just, it just. I know I need to turn in my black card. I just, it just. 
No, David. No, no huh? I got something for you. Thank you, team. Ah, oh, good shit, Lavita. <laughs> Yeah. How y'all able to see it? I'm not able to see the chats. What am I missing? <laughs> How do you hit the thing to say, oh, hi, this is hi, chat? Hey, Miss Reynolds. Yes, ma'am. Hey. No, this is Christine Kane. Oh, Miss Kane. Yes. The one I'm talking all this stuff. Okay, stuff. <laughs> I'm not hey. talking stuff. Can you hear me? Is this the one that was in yeah. the bed? Yeah. Can you, can you hear me? Us? Yes, we can. Did you okay. put clothes on for us? I did. I, I put clothes on. I, I sat up. I'm sitting in my office chair. Oh, God, don't put me. Don't, <laughs> don't show all that now. Good grief. Come on. Hey, hey. Mortimer. Stop it, Big E. I got big hands. Hey, all right, now. Somebody's DMs will be very busy. Have y'all exchanged numbers, but I'm sure that's going to happen in a few minutes. Wow. I might have to move to Philadelphia, brother. Oh. <laughs> What's Philadelphia where I'm born and raised? So, Vita, wow. yes, don't, Vita, don't do anything, okay? <laughs> don't do anything. I'm doing this deliberately, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah! Love and happiness. Yes, baby. He Bills needs to stop, to Mr. David. The O Oliver, voice yes. and TV actor. I'm I'm reading your your uh, intro thingy, your well, banner. Right now, what questions you got? What would you like? I don't have any questions for you, Mister Mister O. I, what, I, I don't. I didn't know I was gonna be put on the spot like this. No, let's do this. How do you feel right now? I I feel fantastic. I feel pretty good. So talking to me is gonna make it even better because I'm gonna tell you what. I'm digging okay. your energy through this camera right now. I'm loving your face. I love those glasses, by the way. I, I got mine right here in front of me. You know what I mean? I love stylish glasses. I've been that way ever since I was a kid. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, go ahead so, and put them on, David. Oh, girl, don't get it started. She's going to try to make me look intelligent. Oh. Give me my Idris Elba look. Let, let, oh, oh, very stylish. Very yes, chic. Yes, that's girl. And this is that blue. This is the two tones. So trust me. You know what I'm saying? I don't play. Ooh. That's why I said I wanted to see who this was. That was mm. talking all the beautiful wonderfulness about me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said, hit me in the DM if you're a private person. I'm not a public <laughs> person, but this is a platform and it's big exclusive, so we got it. Yeah, she got that voice going on. That's why I said, <laughs> I wanted her on it. I knew it was something about her. I said, this chick is hot and is sexy. It's Christine something. Reynolds, you need to back off. <laughs> no, she's trying to get you married and have a spring wedding. You know what I'm saying? Like right after my birthday in June, that's what she's trying to do. So I you feel, are I, Gemini. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I called it. Gemini. I called it. I said it. <laughs> All that mushy, mushy. You don't, you don't dig it after October until February 15th, and then I was like, oh God, this poor sap. He's a Gemini. He doesn't know what to do with his life. I'm mad. You're the only. Let me give you praise right now. You are the only one who's ever caught that. Everybody it's in, it's caught in, that. It's right, in the text. I, 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 I commented. I was like, Gemini. Yeah, he's a Gemini. And Poor so, guy. But, do, but do, you, but do you now believe the simplicity behind what I say when I say what I'm looking for? That's not simplicity. That's duplicity. Because. If it doesn't go your way, then you flip out. Then, 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 then everybody is your enemy until you feel like talking to them again. No, I just step away because I've learned that it's easier to step away because, again, to flip out is burning the bridge. I don't want to do that. If I'm, you know, I, some if, bridges are okay to, to be burned. I mean, I'd rather go. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna light. I'm gonna strike the match. I'm gonna watch it burn. I'm gonna be consumed by the fire, and then I'm gonna rebuild again. That's See, I'm I'm a, I'm a cancer. Okay, so you're better at it than me because what I've learned over the years I'm burn that bridge. But to be a true Gemini mm -hmm. is to separate the two. Like the one way you would handle it is separate from the other way because once you do that, you have a center and you always at peace. Like I said earlier, I have women from my past that try to come back because they remember the good times, but I always say who I was at the core never changed. Can't say what you're the first the Gemini to ever say that to me. Most the true ones will tell you the truth because can't, to believe, can't say you're the first. <laughs> 
Hey, yes, real I, quick, real I quick. I too have had enough. Thank you, Biggie. Can we oh, get right. can we can we get a scene between y'all right quick? Oh, okay, okay. okay. Beat it. We gonna come back. Okay, S sit tight. We gonna come back. Okay. But you gotta That's tell sweet. her what to do, bro. You gotta tell Christine what to do. No, I don't. You gotta tell her. You <laughs> this your class. Okay. How about this, Christine? What is on your mind right now? What is the number one thing you love to do? The number one thing I love to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not going to be that easy. Um, I, I have no idea. I, I prefer you give me direction. Okay. So you tell right. me what is the number one thing I need to do right now. Take it back to the coffee house. Take no, it no, no. <laughs> I'm going to make it even better. I'm going to make it even better. Since she's been talking this, right? Let's do this. Act like I wasn't talking it. anything. You interpreted it. Nah, 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 nah. You this read into those text messages. No, no, you no. Just... I'm building the whole world around the person I was in the text message. Okay. Here we go. Her name is Christine, but it's Christine Johnson. Oh. Right? So now we're creating Christine from you. You see what I'm okay. saying? Mm -hmm. So now I want you to go back to off camera. You're now in the bed. You're in your sexy lingerie or whatever you're doing, like you were a minute ago. You're now in the dark. Starlight's coming through the window, and you're hearing this beautiful voice coming through, more powerful, manly voice. And you're just like, hmm. Mm, What's the first thing that? you say to him? The, the first thing I say to him? Yeah, go ahead. Wait, I'm, I'm in the bed. I hear this powerful voice coming from where? Uh, in the room. It's just around you. Oh, oh, because you got a starlight, the starlight coming through, the moonlight, all that coming into your window. You either naked or you're in your sexy lingerie and it's in the dark. And that's all you got. But you hear this voice that's charming, warm, and embracing you. Are you going to have this cake or are you going to eat it? Please, say again. I just gave it to you. No, no, no. I, I, I was talking. I'm sorry. You hear you. Go, go for it. I got you. Go for it. Are you going to have this cake or are you going to eat it? All in due time. You like that? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my stage, girl. That's how you come to my stage. That's how you come to my stage. Yo, big boy. You got TK ready. She like, you want to eat this cake too? I was like, yeah. That's how you commit. See, that's the first thing I tell everybody. You committed to that because you've probably been here before. I see you. You probably had some situations like, you're like, hmm, let me work this brother up right quick with just my Ooh. word. You know what I'm saying? I see you. You think, oh, you're sweet. She one of them undercover ones, bro. She's an undercover beast. She wanted once to go to work. You know, she got a little bit of suit on and whatnot. And then she gets home, flop, flop. Boy, you don't move this bra, I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You think like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> you all right over there, Biggie? Your show just went rated R. So, <laughs> biggest loser podcast, rated R. <laughs> so, it's funny you should say that, David, because we're actually in the process of recording a three part series. Mm -hmm. on uh sex ah. and it's it's only going to be for like like you have to actually pay to listen to those episodes um the, the the sad part is i couldn't get a lot of people on camera but they're okay mm -hmm. using their voice <laughs> um to lend to the pride to the uh podcast i wonder why but, <laughs> oh once you hear it I, you got i'll make sure you guys preview it uh, what are you raising oh, your oh, hand oh. for? Uh, she's you want to be on, Christine? You got two ladies that want to be on, bro. You would be on camera? Why not? You too, LaVita? Yes. Wait, wait a minute, wait. I've heard about sex. What is what is it again? Cause... I know. <laughs> it was like it was like it was like that ice cream you had on that hot sunny day. Man, it felt good as you were licking it. Then afterwards it just gave you gas. <laughs> wow. 
say he aroused. Go ahead, boy. You crazy as shit. Falco be tripping, man. Stop playing. Don't get that girl started, boy. <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that, that one time <laughs> at band crazy. camp. Yeah. That boy crazy. He voice all in the inside. <laughs> Lisa, come on in here, Lisa. Stop playing. Come on in here. I made V LaVita laugh so hard she teared up. <laughs> That's some good stuff. Dawn said sex is a contact sport. Spirit or sport? Only if it's done right. Exactly. Exactly. And if you see the love scene I directed this weekend, man, y'all going to really love it because... The guy was worried because he's slim. I said, bro, trust me, on camera, it's going to look thick. And when he arched his back, the girls in the room were crazy. And it was just a really great scene. Lisa, you're welcome to come in as well. The link is in the comments. Get on in here if you're trying to get in. Go ahead and ask a question, because she's about to ask you a question. Um, so much is, So much to unpack here. So this room for um uh uh what's that word um Poison. there's a word for people who don't have sex what's that word asexual not asexual celibate celibate celibate, celibate. celibate. there's room in this for celibate people they celibate have- celibacy is a part of a sex life celibacy is a chosen sex life when you don't choose it is a choice or when you don't do it's still a choice. I'm just speaking for Big E. I don't know what what his podcast or the series is all about. I'm just very interested right now. And when is this podcast, sir? So wait a minute, hold, hold, hold up, hold up. Before y'all ask him a ton of questions, you got to remember, y'all telling him y'all want to come on, but also willing to be on camera, right? I've already said that live. It's recorded. There's a whole audience that that will bear witness. There you go, bro. <laughs> I mean, you can't beat that, Christine. That's a hell no. Catherine, what the fuck no. The other Christine. Why not? The sisters. Why not? Those are my sisters, bro. I don't want to oh, hear you that. Birth, like, like my blood? <laughs> yes. Yes. My blood sisters. <laughs> oh. Christine and Catherine Reynolds are my blood sisters. I'm not interested. She just did it there. So. Oh, she's like, you your sisters. Hilarious. Hell no. I thought he meant in spirit. I thought he meant in spirit this whole time. You're no fun, Biggie. Your mama and your daddy is my mama and my daddy. Exactly. (sighs) But they got life experiences, bro. Why not let them talk? The problem is they can talk. It just won't be on my podcast. Isn't Christine married with kids? Yeah, five boys. Oh, well, well, now we know why. Okay. At least five times. She got a basketball team, my nigga. She gonna have some money when she get older. Fuck Ooh. that. Smart move, girl. Hell yeah. Um, if not, they're gonna do construction. One of the two. Get their ass to work. Uh, <laughs> it like my grandmother did me. By 14, I had a job cleaning the streets. <laughs> it, y'all, y'all, see, Pete, they have a lot to say in these comments, right? It's a link comments, in the like, comment. Can y'all can that. join the show if you'd like, okay? Come on in, ladies. <laughs> David, David Smooth Ass got the women going crazy in here, okay? Crazy. Now, this show started out good and wholesome. We just talking about acting. We did an acting scene. It's four of us now. We should do that something. That I else. suggested? That, that I suggested? Yes. What? Yes. Yes. It, it, it was my suggestion? Yes. What yes. was? The, the, uh, coffee, the shop. coffee shop. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why I said let's combine what she was saying with the other Christine. That's why I said was it two Christines because the first Christine was like coffee shop, and then the other one was like South Philly. I said, oh, okay, let's combine the two. You know what I'm saying? That's oh, right. Oh, hey, oh. Lisa. Hi. Hey, look, Lisa. looky, looky, <laughs> looky, 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 looky. Oh, look, <laughs> Why am I doing Nat King Cole? What is, what is <laughs> I don't need to age myself. Nat King Cole is still smooth. Nigga, shut up. Now, Lisa. So crazy. You know I mean? Yes. You just walked in the building. Yes, and you it is. You're going to be on the show. You got to do a scene with David. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Vita, Vita, Christine, sit tight. Do not disconnect, okay? Okay. 
Let's... Why you put me to work, bro? I mean, <laughs> Hi, right, Lisa. Here okay. we go. go. Okay. What you feeling for? You feel comedy or you feel drama? Whatever you want. Okay. I see you right now. You smiling a lot. Let's do drama. Okay. You ready? Now yeah. I'm going to give you a walk in. I want you to see something with your eyes closed. I want you to use your third eye. Have you ever been in a situation with a man where you're feeling rejected, like he's about to end the relationship? Uh, yeah. Can you see him right now? Yeah. Do you remember what he was wearing to the best of your ability? Oh, somewhat. Was it a shirt, hat, coat? Hat. Mm -hmm. Describe the hat for me. Make me see everything. A Yankees hat, maybe a polo shirt. And how were you feeling? Um, not sad. You were feeling kind of happy, like you seeing him, y'all chilling, and then yeah. he's getting ready to tell you this news, but you don't know what he wants to talk about, right? Right. And then all of a sudden he tells you, I don't want to be with you no more. Okay. How did that feel? All right, and uh-uh, keep your eyes closed, baby. I want you to feel it. I want you to see it. I want you to walk back into the memory. Walk back into okay. it. For real. Walk into it. Walk into it. See every bit of it. Do you remember was it a day or night when you had this conversation? It was a nighttime. Nighttime. Do you remember what time? About 12. And how did you feel at 12 o'clock at night? This dude's about to tell you some stuff you don't want to hear. Um, in shock, but not too much. No, but. No but. See, but. but <laughs> okay. Self to in come shock. out. You're in, in shock. shock. So stay there. You stay there. You ready? Mm -hmm. When you open your eyes, I want you to see him on this camera. Are you ready? Yep. And go. Um, Lisa? Yeah. Um, look, I don't think this is, this ain't good. This ain't good. I don't feel it. What's not good? You and me. Ooh. I know you've been feeling this. I know you can't tell me this is something shocking to you. Not really. You mean to tell me this last couple of months you ain't been feeling the distance? You I ain't seen how you're looking at me? I mean, I felt it, but whatever. You didn't see how you've been looking at me? You look I at me like you were But I haven't been looking at you because you haven't and been looking at problem. me. And that's the problem. Oh, well. When you look at me, you don't see me. Well, I guess we got to end it then. See, and I knew you was going to come like this. That's why I knew you weren't in this relationship. I'm giving you everything, and you give me nothing but some nonchalant tone after all we've been through. Think. After all I've done for you, please. All the cooking and cleaning and making sure you're fed, making sure you got dinner on Thanksgiving when you're working, please. So that's what you equate to love? Where's I've the feeling? more than that. Where's the feeling? Those are chores. I've been there for you when your parents died. I don't need a new mom. Okay. I we need it. My woman. Well, we can end this now. Have a good one. You better call Tyrone. I'm a Sagittarius, so I'm a mean. <laughs> I'm mean. I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> Thank you, Simba babies. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna, <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius, I'm mean. She was like, okay, Cut well, what do you want okay. me to do? No, 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 but see, here's the thing. Stay. But watch this, if you've been watching the show all evening, one of the things, and Levita and even Big Exclusive can say this right now, because he can contend, cont um, agree to this. Everything I have you do is you're coming from you, which is mm -hmm. true. But if I had wrote the script for you to give some type of, maybe not even say a reaction, but the words that you chose, mm -hmm. would have given him a little bit more of a stern dismiss. Because remember, he's the one wanting to break the relationship off. The way you're right. taking the character is that she's fine because she's done done enough. And she's like, okay, if he can't see me for all I've done, then I ain't going to sit here and fight with him, which is what you would do. Yeah. But again, the character, the woman you're becoming, this Lisa has to say the same thing, but give a little bit more to it. She would probably go, okay, I hear you, Charlie. I see you. 
and I, I'll admit, this ain't been all great. But all the stuff I've done for you with the cooking, the cleaning, and making sure you were great, even after your parents died, you want to sit here and come to me with this at 12 o'clock at night after I don't work hard all week? You, you know what? We're not going to fight. I'm not even going to give you no reaction. I'm going to give you the satisfaction of you decide where you're going to go. Because I'm going to go over here and enjoy the rest of my night. Now, that's you being Lisa part two. Sagittarius. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you would take yourself and then put it into what the directors wrote and the tone that they want to set. See, I see, never acted a day in my life. But you did good because you followed where I was coming from and you changed the dynamic. So improv wise, you mm -hmm. changed the dynamic just like Christine did. Mm -hmm. See, and the simplicity of it all is what I try to show people. It's not about saying acting. That's why you hear me say constantly, I'm not an actor. It's what I do, but that's not who I am. And I have to give that distinction to people so that when you see my performance, not acting, my performance, it's like this. I took what you gave me in real life and then used my imagination. How would Lisa be this Lisa part two and actually give a reaction without being nonchalant, but I actually give to the women in the audience some connection as to like, you know what, girl, we all been through this. This nigga don't appreciate shit. Fuck mm -hmm. him. But without saying he don't appreciate shit, fuck him in a way where the men can be like, oh, wow, man, Charlie fucking up. He about mm -hmm. to lose a good one. Because mm -hmm. that's the tone that you want to have. Free class. <laughs> 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 now you know why the guy won't be making a chorus. I don't know why, but people like it. I don't know. You know. What? I'm we not. can't hear you. We can't hear you. I said thank you me. for joining. And I want to do some more acting. This feels like a workshop now. And I, I, I gotta <laughs> I gotta say thank you to David because we weren't supposed to run this long, right? Wow. But he he's 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 allowing us to go over and, and pick his brain and, you know what I mean, have this acting workshop live on the podcast. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you. I appreciate you for, you know, extending and, and, and giving us more of your time. Now, oh, that I'm sorry, not to cut you off, brother. I'm, I'm not that dude, bro. It's your function. These are your people. I'm trying to give the stuff away for free and I love their energy and I welcome it. So it's never tiring when you, just like they say in basketball, you don't never tire as long as you're making them shots. Facts. And this right here, I love how these people coming in, even with LaVita and I, we don't get a chance to do this banter that often. So I welcome it all. And, you know, I'd rather somebody other than myself tell you about myself because I don't they'll tell you I ain't got nothing to hide man I don't care and I love that these ladies volunteer to just get themselves dressed and just jump in here and still look great you know and talk <laughs> their shit you know like it's still Valentine's Day they, they want me to pay their rent but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> I don't say no <laughs> see Paco like nigga get me one <laughs> you know man I got you man I, I don't have like him thick. <laughs> what do you say? He like him thick. That rules me out. So, all right, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. Your sister's going to be like, dude, why didn't you let me be a part of the show? <laughs> she she can come on. She, she, she just can. can't do. She just can't do the podcast on sex. That's going to be like the Patreon or the paid well, um, show. Like, like she can come on right, right now here. if you want. You get these three ladies going, boy. I, I'm already seeing the show in my head. I've already seen where the three of them will take the show. To, it's by themselves, and you ask one question, the three of them will go for an hour. I can see this already. This conversation is... See, y'all need to find each other. I'm done. I'm out. Y'all need to find each other. The four y'all need to find each other. The, 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 the fact that they're okay with being on camera, like, I prefer the, the footage than having just the audio. You know, I say that to people all the time, bro, and people don't understand the importance of that. I tell them all the time, get copy, get copy. You never know, 30 seconds. 
is more powerful than three minutes. Mm -hmm. I'd rather see you for 30 seconds than to listen to you for three minutes because I, mm -hmm. I don't get the tone. I don't know. Just like I don't like texting because it's like I don't know your tone. For me, you know it's uh, it's 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 nuance, right? right? That's that to me what's important when you get the visual, because you don't get that nuance when you just hear. I mean, again, part of you know a series of questions I was going to ask you is about voice acting because, like, you were on one of my favorite video mm -hmm. games. Um, let me just play that clip because in this, I, you know what. No, no pretense. I'm gonna just let y'all check it out because this is incredible. And when I originally saw it, and the people that were in it with you, I was, I was, I was blown away. So you, you guys got to check this out. And I, I, I dare not end the show without playing this clip. Check it out. Hey, what's cracking? Franklin Clinton, dog. I'm the manager. And some cross-eyed OCB motherfucker, I might like you, but you ought to know this shit. There's lines you don't cross. Fuck you think, Dre, the phone, where it is, the buck stops with you. I'll give Franklin a call when we know. I'm a hustler that made Now I work with rich folk who got rich folk problems. And they don't know how to deal with it. But damn, man, I miss getting these hands dirty. I've been around Marathon, Compton, Avalon. One big client, one A-list name, and we straight. Okay, what you trying to do now? What I'm always trying to do, I'm trying to work. You with me? Yes, Lord. Dances. Big shot, bend the bum. Make me reminisce upon. I remember me and dogs. I like this. Dickie's on. What was that in 93? You probably wasn't even born. Dre, I think you need to trade. Crazy, bro. What's happening, dog? I'm Lamar Davis. I'm sure my colleagues have told you about me. We Brother. We got David O. With Anderson Pac. And Dr. Dre. I need the story on this one, please. There is none. <laughs> Let me tell y'all this. The magic of what Rockstar did is like, it was a, like applying for a government job. Outside of giving, short of giving them blood and urine samples, dude, they scoured everything about me. And I'm going to tell y'all real quick before I go any further. I'm still stuck on stupid that I'm in this damn thing. They got my forehead and my crooked smile. That That's the part that blows me because I'm sitting there, man, they got my face. They got my crooked, so that's just a lone smile when I get excited. And I was like, oh, shit. And the thing about it, I'm not a voiceover type guy. I'm just a guy who just happened to have voice. You know what I'm saying? A voice. And... Alexa, stop. <laughs> yeah, she was set for something else. I'm sorry, guys. I had to, give, I had to do something for my student by 930, but she, she said she couldn't make it. So um, he, the way they sent the thing to me, they said, act it out. So they didn't tell us specifically who it was and what it was. They just kept saying video game. I thought it was a promo. And for about a month, they kept going back and forth with the dates and everything. And I jokingly said to my manager, Hey, why don't they just go get Snoop Dogg, man? Why don't they stop bugging me, man? Like, do I got it or not? But what I have to remember at the level I'm currently at, they have to vet everything, scheduling, um, budget, you know, costuming and so on and so forth. And then when you get to the level that I'm at, every day that they put you on hold, they got to pay for that. So if it ain't in the budget, they're not going to tell you exactly that you got the part. So literally for over a month, I was just sitting there like, what, 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 what? And finally, I get there and I see one of my guys I used to, you know, work with years ago that I gave some advice to. We and him catching up with another young cat who's new to the game. Uh, his name is Quincy. He's on Law and & Order. And my other guy, Javad, um, who's also in it, he's um, a seasoned actor. He's been doing his thing. So now he's out teaching and doing people's demos like I was showing him how to do his years ago. And so we sat there all day, man, literally in the little outfits. I was surprised I had one to fit my big ass. And uh, I mean, I give you I give you a quick synopsis. They tell me to come to New York. They're gonna have the lady pick me up the next morning. So of course I go up, I stay at my favorite hotel. She comes get me. It's about a 30 to 40 minute ride to, uh, 
I think it's Long Island, Levita. I'm trying to remember. I know you said it was near you, but on the upside. But anyway, we get there. There's no signage on none of the buildings. We pull into this huge complex. There's no signage on no buildings, just numbers. We pull up to one joint. They doing police training. And we like, oh, snap, we got the wrong building. By the time they get to, we get to the right building, she says she needs to go to the bathroom. The dude comes out, David, like, hey, man, how you doing? All right. Um, she needs to go to the bathroom, she said. He said, oh. She said, yeah, I'm the one that picked him up. He's like, yeah, I can't let you in the building. Oh. I said, whoa. And I just stood there. Now, he's a cool guy, right? So he wasn't being, you know, an asshole or, like, security. You know, he's a regular dude. But when I got in the doorway, I then understood why. Because the second you walk in their building, it is their world from top to bottom, every wall, every piece of the ceiling, every piece of the floor is trade secrets from top to bottom. So it's like walking into Marvel or Disney, man. You're you're not you you're not getting that bill unless you got purpose. And to get there and do what we did, I tell people it's like playing laser tag with your friends. And then the next day you go into a booth and you do you. So it, it was wild. We sat there, and because of COVID, this made it even cooler. The building didn't have a lot of people in it. And each one of us, just imagine your man cave. Imagine your basement decked out. That's what each one of us had to ourselves. We had a refrigerator fully loaded. We had pinball, pool tables, video games. Man, we had the couch, the futons. We had that joint lounging, eating gourmet meals and whatnot. That's why Levita's talking, because I told her, that's the beauty of being this level. And then we go and shoot. And again, for those that love gaming, if you love building worlds, man, th this, this is where your imagination takes over, bro. You got to use your imagination in this moment because I'm sitting there. And of course, I'm trying to be like, hey, you know, he's a lion, man. Yeah. You ready for this? Because there's a scene that I didn't know in the game where I'm literally getting out the car. And I got to say to the other guy that's the leader, like, yo, you ready for this? Let's go. So that's how I sound. And I had to flip it back to my old days of being running the streets of Northeast and Southeast in D.C. And it just worked. Right. So I got a British director trying to figure it out. So we kept rewriting, rewriting, because, again, they wanted it to fit the tone of the character. And then we shot the stuff, but I didn't shoot everything. That's the thing. Not to give away their trade secrets. I didn't shoot everything. Right. But the way they built it, when you see the final game, it makes sense to me because some of the scenes I'm saying, why does the door open backwards? Is this one of them 1964 convertibles like the frat pack drives with it? What is this? But in the game, I'm leaning out the truck shooting people while you're the driver. So oh. you got to play alongside me to complete the mission to get Dr. Dre's phone. But here's the biggest whoop. I didn't know it was Dr. Dre. Really? You, you, you were close with Snoop. You were close. No, but understand the joke. Understand the joke. I can give this part away because we had, even for me to have this interview with you, I had to get permission. Mm. So literally, the game came out December 15th. I found out from my boy that's in it on the 20th. I had to spend the entire holiday season going around to my family. And the people who in the cosplay say, yeah, white cosplay is me next year. Things go right. And they're like, what you talking about? And I kept doing this snake thing. I'm talking about counting money. I'm like, no, idiot. <laughs> gaming, <laughs> gaming. <laughs> They're like, say it. No, damn it, trades. <laughs> Figure it out. So I had to wait. And so when they finally sent the thing, because in the contract, in big, bold print, and I had to find and send it to my manager. Do not tell anyone. Anybody. The concepts, the characters, not even a fucking accent. Nothing about the project to any level could be told. And the story behind it is I'm doing at home, right? Like Levita said about Zoom, this is why I teach in my class. Don't get caught up on a reader. Don't get caught up on having somebody in your face. It's all you. I'm doing Too Short meets E40 meets Snoop Dogg. I mean, you know what I'm saying? In the house. I'm wearing a blue shirt. And in the next take, I'm wearing a red shirt. I didn't know whether he was going to be a blood or a crib. I just went. I just went. I just went. And I'm like, yo, what's up, nephew? What the fuck are you doing out here, man? So when you out here in these streets, you representing me. You got my blood in you. What did I give a fuck about that nigga? I went up to the club, got out my car, and hit him with the motherfucking back. And put respect on my name. 
Now that's here at home. I get to the studio, it's like, yo, you ready for this? Totally different energy, more military, right? I'm walking around like black Rambo the whole time with the gun like this, going back to my Marine days like this. <laughs> with my gut all out and shit, like, oh, this gonna be some shit, man. I'm back behind the building and shit. I'm laser tagging this bitch, and we watching it on the screen. We it was motion capture? Dude, I don't even call it motion capture. I just call it world building, because we were in the bitch. Wow. Literally, it's frames. If you haven't played laser tag on a large scale, dude, that, that's all I can tell you. It's not, now I get why the actors who do the full on movies mm -hmm. look the way they look when they get done. Because you're strapped with at least 10 pounds on your head. The thing is skin tight, okay? So if you're not used to wearing tight clothes or European clothes, you're not gonna feel comfortable, first of all. Then you gotta run around and move. Mm -hmm. But then, <laughs> You gotta imagine what you're moving to because when you look at the screen above you, not to give away their trade secret, but you can see it in real time. Mm -hmm. So once we would do the scene, we stop and we look up and they have played everything from every possible human angle you can think of in that room. Wow. Every wow. angle had a camera. Wow. Every angle. And I was sitting there like, God damn, how did you wow. so fast? Right? And then I'm still thinking like everybody else. Well, where's the point today in my face? But they're in your face the whole day. You just don't know it. They're catching your nose flaring and everything. That's why I laugh when I watch that scene. They're catching my nose flare. And I'm like, what the fuck? Did they catch me? You know what I'm saying? They caught it. I'm like, yeah, we won't let you know when we find out something. I was like, what the fuck? And then we never see who's who. One of the guys who's a seasoned performer was saying how they flew in. Uh, what's the dude? Uh, Black Jesus, the dude that played Black Jesus. Uh huh. They fly him in from LA, hmm. so they get the real people to where they are. So it's all real, but we don't see each other. So I had no idea, and I saw the trailer with Anderson Park, Buster Rhymes, Dr. Dre, and Spliff all in the studio together. So that clip you showed. Yeah. That's real with them together in the studio. So I was like, oh, what is this? Oh, this must be cool. They must got a new song coming out. <laughs> My dumb ass never <laughs> asked no questions. <laughs> I ain't said nothing. I'm reading the script, but the next, here's the thing. And you asked us earlier about getting the script. Son, son, I had one line at the shoot. One line, one, one, one. One line, people. You gotta understand that word. I'm gonna hold that number one. By the time I got to the studio about a week or so later, they had pages, son. <laughs> they flipping through freaking pages in front of me like the fuck. You want me to retain all of this shit? I'm good. Not that damn good. I can get you two pages in like five minutes. Probably four. Levita seen me do it. But god damn, they had like ten or more pages, bro. Full on conversation, not just one liners, and I'm zinging them and I'm zip zip, yeah, man, zip zip. So, my improv skills, this is why I teach in class, came in full effect because I had to zip that shit quick. And if the director felt like it needed to be changed, they changed it right there on the fly. They even caught me when I said, Well, I'm from the east coast, this is how we would say it. This is what they say on the west coast with a little extra slang, but down south, they say it this way. And he flipped it for the down south thing. So if you're playing the game from time to time, I sound like from down south. <laughs> Whole time. That and is and, incredible. And and here's the funny thing about it. You probably couldn't tell there because by the time I got to the studio, it went from E40, Too Short, and Snoop Dogg come together to DMX meets Samuel Jackson. So that's what you hear in the final take. <laughs> so you get DMX. That's why sometimes I'm like, yo, Pete, you can't do that. <laughs> what? Oh. Man? God damn, can't you drive? They literally put that in the game, dude. I watched the kid play it on YouTube. You literally hear me screaming, yo, man, you can't drive. <laughs> oh, shit, it made it into the game. I'm stuck on stupid. I, and the whole holiday season, I couldn't say shit to nobody. So the clip you see, I showed Curtis, and Curtis cut that one because there was a fan who did the original clean cut. I didn't know GTA had his own editor. I didn't know that. I didn't know none of this, bro. I'm sitting there stuck on stupid. I had to give the kid praise, and he hits me back saying, oh, shit, I didn't know Vernon. Hey, man, 
you got to go to some more GTA fan pages because people will love to talk to you. But the lead guy that plays Franklin, he's a real LA gang dude. You and that poor, that poor driver had to go release her, her loins somewhere else because they wouldn't oh. let her in the building. But I know why, though, because, I mean, again, when you walk in, the second you get past that, what's the, uh, the atrium? The, that's the, mm -hmm. Once you get into the main part, it's over. Wow. The second oh. he closed that door behind me, I lost where I was at. Wow. It, it, it was like song. A whole new world. Right now. I was done. <laughs> I was done. I was in that motherfucking people Bryson like a shit. <laughs> oh, I want to be in that one. Oh, I love that game. Oh, y'all make that one. Oh, okay, what's up with that one? And I'm just like, oh, 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 and not realizing my fat ass is going to be in the next one because okay. I thought it would take two years. Clearly, that wasn't out. asteroids anymore. Say again. Clearly, that wasn't asteroids anymore. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm sorry. Remember that game, asteroids? Oh. <laughs> oh, an old school game, yeah. Old school. Yes. No, no, they had it in the building. Most of the old school shit they had in the man caves. Yes, <laughs> yes. Rockstar is no joke. When so you could play it out and then go play. Go play. That's why I say to anybody, just imagine playing laser tag. Somebody's recording you, and when they play it back, you in Call of Duty. Wow. Just, just imagine that. That's Dang. the best way I can tell you my experience. That's why I tell people that there is no real story. And the reason why I can say that, because when I went to the studio to do the voice part and not to give away their trade secrets, it was different. Being a full-on actor was more important than being a voiceover actor, okay. because in that moment, yeah. they had everything around you still in the studio. So I'm literally stepping into this little alcove with this giant screen and they're flipping them as, a, as every time I say it, and the director's like, like cool, poof, poof, poof. So I'm having whole conversations by myself. That's why I always tell my students, practice without a reader, mm -hmm. because you're going to have a point. If you're doing something with CGI, you got to act to a tennis ball. How do you make the tennis ball your best friend? Am I right? See, he gets <laughs> So you got to be committed. You know, and I even Is your hand students. raised, LaVita? <laughs> yes. Go for it. Go for it. I'm sorry. Ask questions. Ask questions. So, do you know? Do you all know who Andy Circus is? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. So you say you went through. You went through what he did for um, Lord of the Rings. In, in Lord of the Rings. Yes, because again, there was and Play of the Apes. Yes. yes. Yes, I loved him in that. Caesar was. I love that character. That's yep. that's the type of character that I look for. That allows you to build because in the in the in the reason why I love this game and it hasn't hit me yet, and not to bore your audience, but again, there was a moment where I slipped. I went back to the Northeast dude, and the director said, "Dave, that sounds like you." And I said, "I'm sorry." I had to laugh for two minutes because for two minutes I went back to Northeast DC, just that quick. So all the way I sound now was completely wiped out. I was. The 16-year-old David O trying to run around with his friends in junior high school and high school. And he heard every ounce of that and said, Dave, that sounds like you. I couldn't do nothing but laugh for two minutes. I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all taking me back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies, do you have any questions for David? No. Yeah, I want to do some more acting. Well, 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 it feels like once we cut off. There's somebody here that will be asking some questions, but I'm not gonna say who that is. <laughs> so. I can handle two, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I know Christine and Lisa got questions. I know they got something. Go ahead, they can ask questions. Even if it's not pertaining to this, y'all do have the understanding now. Let me just say to you this. Now do you understand what level that he was talking about early when he gave this big introduction? Did you guys hear the intro? I wasn't no, I here for intro. that. Oh, okay. They missed it. Well, no, he gave such a alluring introduction. I forgot it was me he was talking about. Because <laughs> I like I never say Hollywood. I never say New York. I never say where I'm at. Even when you look at my posts, I'm always saying the grind. Because I just want people to understand the process more than the final product. Because, again, like I said to him earlier, a lot of the Comic-Cons, the only reason why I'm doing this now <laughs> is because I developed a program called Phantom to Stardom. So like what I just did with you ladies would give you an idea, say you want to do fashion. 
You want to do public speaking. You want to get started doing something. You want to preach at your church. You want to be a politician. These are things that I would teach because, again, it's public speaking, branding, marketing, promotion, and just getting in touch with yourself that makes you relatable to anyone. So even if you're trying to go to a school and convince them to give you a scholarship, you still got to know how to market yourself. You know what I'm saying? And some people are too humble where they don't want to talk about themselves or some people are too aggressive when they talk about themselves. So it's a balance. And I teach all that. And when I get a chance to, I like to give it away for free. But as my boy and my team told me, some of these comic cons aren't set up for people to better themselves. They just want them to come in there and be geeks and that's the end of it. And all I tell everybody, my story is as a fan, I saw people spending thousands of dollars to become these characters from the games, from these TV shows, from the comic books. And I'm and I'm a fan, but I'm different. I'm not going to buy your comic book. I'm going to help you get the funding and go get distribution for your comic book or your music or whatever you do. So that's how I got into singing, rapping, and dancing. And now with the acting. So my bucket list was checked off a long time ago. And this thing here with the video game, nobody in the Comic-Con scene can ever question me again when I say, you spend $1,000 to dress these characters from the games. Well, I'm getting the same money to be the character in the game. So now I'm a part of the story. That's all I ever wanted to be. I wanted to be a part of the story, not another statistic at somebody's event. Oh, we had 10,000 people. I got $10,000. Would y'all like to see how I got $10,000? One time, $10,000? Would y'all like to learn? Game forever. Would y'all like to learn it? Hell yeah. And I ended up in every office around the country as the number one spokesperson. I'll show you. Hold on, camera's here. I'm holding up a pair of jeans. So for holding up a pair of jeans like this, I made ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I need that job. <laughs> and all it was was a campaign about living positive with type two diabetes, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't know I was a type two diabetic, and the medication that we were promoting, I was actually taking. Mm -hmm. So wow. they had no clues. A double whammy, just like that piece you showed earlier in my acting demo, where I'm sitting there with a girl at the baseball game. That was for the federal government for the charity campaign that they do. Well, they didn't know I was a federal government employee. Mm -hmm. And I had no clue how the charity campaign worked. So it was a double whammy for them. So that's wow. been my story. I have no clue. Just like I said with GTA, I have no clue what I'm doing. Somebody say, hey, you want to do this voice? Sure. You got to act it out. Okay. You got to sound like you're from the West Coast. Okay. I'll do Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg. I can do Too Short. And if you want me to rhyme, I can do E40. And I started rhyming in the fucking game. <laughs> they got my rhymes in the fucking game, dude. I'm I'm tripping. And then when I see Dr. Dre, I was just, Dr. Dre. I was talking about Dr. Dre this whole goddamn time. Wow. Hey, ain't nobody tell me, nigga. The fuck? Hold on, let me say it right. Nigga. Nigga. <laughs> Don't worry, I can't see Levita, say it either. See, Levita, they can say it right. <laughs> Yeah, no, right <laughs> So wait, Christine. Yo. Christine, you 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 got to do the color purple. Oh, yeah. I thought you said this is hair at your joint. That one? No, it's. But that's the one I like. Okay, which one? What we doing? Till you do right by me. <laughs> You ready? <laughs> Center and three. <laughs> she laughing too. Hard. And three, two, one, action. Till you do right by me, ain't nothing. I forgot the words. Now I'm good drink. Yeah. Drink. She had it too. She was right on the money too, dog. <laughs> she was right on the money. She was holding it too. She tried to get that last word. But I'm gonna tell you something. Improv wise, if she wasn't, this is what I meant earlier about technical. If she wasn't caught on the technical aspect of what you wanted her to say, what would you have said then at that point, Christine? Just if you just you doing you, what would you say at that point? And nothing gonna come right to you. Or nothing's gonna be good for you. Mm -hmm. So how would Something you say to that effect? Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and say what you were saying. 
Oh, you, oh, you want me to say it? Yeah, instead of hers, do it your way. Do it my way in, instead of the character? Yeah, watch. Go yeah. Ahead. Make it your own. How would Christine say it? I don't know. <laughs> Until you do right by me, ain't, ain't nothing good coming your way. Bam. You see that lip? You see that lip drop? You see that lip drop? Ain't nothing coming your way. That's the shit right there. <laughs> see, that's how you play it. That's why I tell people, make it your own, man. It's fun. It's fun. Lisa, you ready? Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, we got to get Lisa. We got to get Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> Come on, Lisa, Lisa. Come on, man. What am I ready? To say? What am I supposed to say? No, watch this. How would you say, ain't nothing going to be done by right by you until you do right by me? Ain't nothing going to be done right by you until it's done right by me. Mm -hmm. You ready? No. See, she is, she Wait, is, what? what? I'm ready to play. <laughs> <laughs> See, she's one of the people that bids in everything until she gets necessary for her to really show the big emotion. You know what I'm saying? Because she's one of those girls. Sagittarius. <laughs> Reserve. Yeah. This nigga. Yeah, trust me. You said it earlier when you was doing the scene with Charlie. Mm -hmm. You said it, you gave it away. So if I was a director, I wouldn't hire you for this role. I would hire you for the sassy girlfriend who always got those sharp one-liners because mm. you're guaranteed to deliver that. Great example, Zainab Johnson, the female comedian who's on um, Upload. It's getting ready to do season two. I love her. She plays that role that most white women would get. So that That's, the, that's the friend that works in the office with the main character? Yes. Okay. That's all in love with the dude while he's in heaven, yeah. Yeah. I watched it over the pandemic. I feel a little bit. I'm kind of mad I didn't get a chance to read for it. But to Levita's thing, I've read for polls. Had I got the scene, and this again, not knowing, that's why she's mad at me whenever I tell the story. I didn't know it was Billy Porter. I would have been opposite of if I got the role. Because mm. again, I didn't know the show was about gay people or any of that thing. Everybody I told about that I was reading for it lit up like you thought it was Christmas. Like, you're going to be on that show. You be on that. Yeah. But when I saw the poster, the girl that plays the head mother, the tall Doskin one, it scared me because I said, no, nah, I ain't doing this. And my man's like, why? I said, she was on a reality show with Whoopi Goldberg a couple of years ago called Strut, right. trying to have a baby with her husband. I said, I don't want to do this because most people thought I was gay after that bullshit they pulled on me on Simple Like Three with Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. Oh, wow. Because the way they cut that, that was funky, man. I'm having a joke with her, Nicole and they going to instead of and they kept trying to get me. They said it earlier because I do this character called Donovan Sinclair. That's an impersonation of my mother, but his name is Donovan Sinclair by day, and at night he's Sinclair Donovan. But we never show any you know thing to make it all about him being gay. He just happens to be gay, but his advice is universal. It's like an old sage. So it's like he's a gay version of Doctor Phil. He's not a therapist, but yet he is one. But he's a hairstylist. <laughs> so he is a therapist. Basically, Basically right? yeah. So the tagline is come here and get both your hair and your life straight. <laughs> yes, I, I see oh, you. That's cool. you have and your life straight. That's cool. Right? Okay. And this is why I said about your cool. writing. This is why I said you about your writing. The same I said to my uh, student this past weekend. When I read her script, that's why I came to do it and I did it for free. She wasn't expecting me to come. And I said, no, I got you. She said, well, I wasn't going to ask you. I said, you wanted you, didn't She said, yeah. I said, I got you. So her first time out looks like her third or fourth film. And I mm -hmm. told her, you should never operate on day one like it's day one. Operate like it's day 31. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. And that's what I gave her. So her first time out, she only got two mistakes. But they're minor. Everything else, boom. You would never know it's her first one. You probably think it's her fourth or fifth. Mm -hmm. Lisa, you're not getting away without delivering the line now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, yeah. Wait a minute. I know Lisa sing. No, I do not. Ugh. With that no, face, do you don't sing. <laughs> With that face, you don't sing. <laughs> you don't no. do no Jill Scott. You don't do no Eric. No. Okay, whatever. She does whatever. Lisa. <laughs> well, take me home then. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me get that light. <laughs> 
Take yes. I got you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Don't have me doing no full force. Ain't my time to hype. Oh, oh. <laughs> what? Come on. What? Don't stop. What's, what's, your, what's, your, what's your favorite movie, Lisa? Oh, in the world. Did you like Love Jones? Oh, that's good. I haven't seen that in years. Set it off. Set it off was a good one. Okay. <laughs> you remember anything? You remember anything from the movie? No, no I, I don't. No, I don't, see, be, I don't be remembering lines. No, 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 no. Here's the question: How it should be for it? What's the movie you can put on repeat and you love to watch no matter what? Because most people who don't be in entertainment can't give you a favorite movie, but they can tell you something that they would love to watch. Just that simply put, you just love to watch it. You don't have to recall no lines or nothing, but just you love to watch it. Moving TV. See, Lisa wasn't ready tonight, baby. She's going to get you out there. At the light school now, she got you. <laughs> Turn the lights down low. Yes. Pull back Turn your the lights. <laughs> Light a candle. Oh, see, I'm doing Bob Molly. He's going straight to Teddy P. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. I told you earlier. Did I tell you trying to do Teddy P earlier? Hey, I, know I, mean. I know it. I know it. Actually, I got a video I'm trying to do Luther Vandross. Give me any crap. line. Huh? This boy. Give you Give any line. Any line. What's the last thing you yeah. watched that you enjoyed? Wakanda like forever. No, no, no. What'd you say? Lisa, what'd you say? Lisa? <laughs> Can you hear us? I didn't hear you, dear. I watched you for everybody paused. I watched Euphoria. That was the last show I watched last night. Okay. And you liked it? I've never watched that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. most people are talking about like. They don't want to see kids doing adult things, and I'm like, yeah, I get it. But they're not, not kids, part. right? I don't, I don't. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Give me some child actors. I, I would, I would fall into it if it was kid actors. But when I know the girl, it's very rocky. Like, right? Because when I see Zendaya after seeing her in Malcolm and David, or is it Malcolm, Malcolm and Marie? I'm sorry, whatever it was on Netflix, when she stepped up in that role. Oh yeah, that was she, She's grown. She grown. Mm -hmm. And I have a Filipino friend that looks like her. And I was telling her, I said, you need to watch this movie. She's like, well, I said, this is you. This is you and your last relationship. She's like, for real? I said, watch it. She watched it and she fell in love with Zendaya because she saw herself. And I said, yeah, you won't believe she always playing these goddamn kid roles. Mm -hmm. That's the same shit from Spider-Man. Like, fuck that. This, this, this elevated her. So to look at Euphoria and she's supposed to be high school. Yeah. Yeah. I got thing. something, La, 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 La Vida and Lisa. I think Vida can bring it out. You. Her demeanor, I think, will help you, like with a scene. Christine, sit tight, okay. David, sit tight, okay. <laughs> I am going to sit tight. The goal is Vida is going to help you. Figure out a line. Remember, no dead air. That's the kiss of death, okay? Talk it through. Come up with a line, and then we'll come back, and we're going to watch you deliver, and then we're going to do one more scene, and then I'm going to get back to David so we can start to wrap it up, okay? But you're not okay. leaving here without delivering a line or something, Lisa, okay? I'm not leaving. <laughs> I will hold you hostage, okay? <laughs> Vita, help her out, please. Mm, um, let's see. Uh, waiting to exhale. Um, okay. Um, uh, what's love got to do with it? Uh, okay. uh, let's go back to waiting to exhale. It was there a character in there that you 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 identified with? They're all pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Whitney? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why, why Whitney? Mm. Why Whitney? The cheating. The cheating. Okay. So who who do you think of that comes to mind right now that you, you, you're talking to right now? Do you see him? No. 
Maybe this somebody way, in the past. Yeah, with, with someone in the past that, that hurt your feelings and then and, and cheated yeah. on you. Yeah. Even if we don't have the exact lines, we need to come up with, you need to have him in mind for us to create that scene. So I will be, um, I will be a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, Angela, Angela's character, forgot her name. They had scenes together, didn't they? I believe they did. We can make it up. It doesn't matter. Really a minute. Matter. <laughs> it's been a minute. So, so um, I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm over your house, and you're throwing his stuff. You, th no, that was that was me. That was my character throwing his the stuff out the window. So I'm coming over your house, and um, I'm coming over to talk to you about your that the latest man, wondering if you're gonna stay with him. Because he just he just embarrassed you by getting caught with two three women and um, one is one is pregnant, so we're gonna start there. Oh, G girl, oh. is it true what I hear on the streets that um, Bobby is out here just slinging it out? I, I heard he I heard he got somebody pregnant. He did. That bitch from downtown. Which one? Bar. He, when he says he's at a business meeting, he's been going over there to the bar, hooking up with that bartender. Not the bartender who swore that she didn't know him. Yeah, that one. When I went down there asking if he was there, and she said she hadn't seen him. How far along is she pregnant? She looked like she about six months. He says it's not his. That she's a whore. She sleeps around with all the men in the bar. He, so what, 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 what's his excuse? His excuses, he said, he's been at work, he's been at business, he just goes there when he gets stressed out to have a drink. But then, but that just don't make no sense. Because she came to my house, knocking on my door, telling me that was her baby dad. Well, he just proposed to you. So how does he make that work? I don't know how he thinks this is going to work. You know, I'm because just how you going how you going to propose to me and then have, have knock up some other woman? How's that going to work? What do I look I mean, like? I look like a fool if I, I mean, stay with him. The two of you went to counseling and swore that there was some changes going on. And he swore to you that he changed. And now I don't think I could still do it. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't even do it after the counseling. Even if we got more counseling. Because I don't want to look like a fool. Not with some other woman's child. And then, you know, how does that look? We just get married and here he got a little baby on his head. That's just too much on your shoulders, sis. And then all the other women that he's been talking to that I found in his phone. Oh, no, sis, no. Yeah, it, it was horrible. I couldn't even believe it. Like that day, I think I'll drink that whole bottle of wine. Sis, is it true that he takes off his wedding ring? Is his... He left it at home. Several times I, he left it and I called him at work. It was like, what the hell is this shit doing here? Evening, ladies. Uh, who are y'all talking about? <laughs> her, her, her fiance. Um, so you're talking about me? Uh, who is leaving the wedding ring off? Where, where are you getting this information you, from? You left your wedding ring on the table several times, and I called you at work to say why you left it. You talk about something you forgot. Baby, baby, why are you listening to this girl? It's all gossip. You know me. I told you what's happening. No, 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 no. This woman came to the house and described what you did that you did to me, to her, and there's no... Uh, you know, I don't got time for all this gossip. You know what I'm saying? Gossip. You want to believe these bitches in these goddamn streets or you want to believe your man? Who you think going to be in here taking care of? you calling a bitch, David? You know what? You didn't call me a bitch when we were together last night. Look, you two run your mouths. Y'all doing too much. Y'all trying to fuck with my house. This is my house. That's my woman. Ain't nothing got nothing going on with y'all. Y'all need to get out of here and just stay where y'all need to be at. Go back and fuck with your man. Or better yet, go fuck with each other. How you about know that? what? So how do you how do you explain the pregnant, pregnant bartender? How do you explain the pregnant bartender? It ain't got nothing to do with me nor you. So how do I explain it? Nothing. There's a probability if you slept with her. What you mean? Ain't no problem. My woman know you what my dick is. You don't even want to get a DNA test. So what? Why am I going to get a DNA test for something I ain't do, girl? You know my dick only goes to you. Because my dick only goes to you. 
ain't got nothing to do with them. That's not, not what family. Jill and, and Marquise and, and all those other girls said. Maybe they're going to say something because you know why? You got the best nope. of the best of the best in your house. Look at this heifer here. Look at her. She want to be in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> and what if she does? Bed. You ain't going to say no to that. Bed. She want to take your place. <laughs> hey, David, have you told her about us? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody want a piece of the juice. <laughs> Why you want the juice, Slim? You know you've been her friend for decades, nigga. Now all of a sudden you want to try to play like I swing on the other side of the gate. Nah, my nigga. Go we with heard, now, heard about that. Go ahead you know and let we her heard know. About that at the we bar. about to be one big happy family. Oh, shit. My nigga. Take you and the Tootsie Fruit shit you got going on and go back across the Rainbow Bridge with Thor, okay? No, oh, you okay. wanted to taste the rainbow last night. Nah, nigga, no Skittles. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Nothing but honey dip Her pussy is the that, only pussy I dive into. And I'm going to tell you right the fuck now. If y'all want to live and breathe before I put your teeth to the back of your mouth, you might want to shut the fuck up and get the fuck out of my door. You, you, got five. Sir. you got five, sir. Sir, you, five. You, know. you are you very four. familiar with you got the, the Hershey two. Highway. You got the two, you got the one, and there's your ass. <laughs> Someone said everybody describe, everybody describe that tattoo that's down there. <laughs> David been slinging it every which way but loose. <laughs> yes, Christine, they not gonna catch me, baby. I don't know the stories. I don't been around too many fucking pimps and shit. I see it too many times. <laughs> but wait a minute, can I say something? I'm gonna say I'm very proud of the ladies coming in. Yeah, where Christine going? She's about she's about to punch back in. I, I, the link is there, Christine. Okay. Uh, it's right um, here. It's starred again. You just click on it, come back in. And I want to say, glad you ladies who, who don't claim to be entertainers, don't have that desire. I like how you guys handle it. But most importantly, I want to say to my friend, not my student anymore, because she has become the master. She just pulled shit out of Lisa's ass like a motherfucker. So. <laughs> Bravo, wait a minute. Bravo, bitch. Bravo. She came, she came out of that you show. Eyes, you made her eyes sing, bitch. You guys, really? she came forth and was like, she brought all that shit for. She wasn't no Sagittarius. What she called herself, Sagittarius or whatever she said earlier? <laughs> when she hit that cheating shit, and uh, you must have had a nigga get caught up with another broad and get pregnant because she let that yeah, shit. Yeah, that shit hit a nerve. I felt all her fucking ass in that one, god damn it. You know what I'm saying? I was, that was I real was life. Thing, like, <laughs> Thank you. Like, never well, happened, but but no, Levita was using my technique, and she took you there, and it was so casual that you fell into the box, like I it did. was nothing. So y'all got into the box together, and she worked with you to allow you to take lead. You know what I'm saying? She didn't have to like she saw what I did with the guy in Atlanta and his girlfriend. How they hit Levita and the guy tried to do the scene together. He was supposed to be the lead, but he wouldn't lead her. And then she showed what I did with his girlfriend, who's not an actress, who didn't want to be an actress just like you guys. But she just wanted to do the scene to have fun. And you can see how I bring it out of her. And that's what Levita allowed you to do. She allowed you to be the sleed and she'd be the strong support. So then when Big Exclusive jumped in and Christine jumped in with her line, and her one line would have got her, you know, a supporting award or supporting mm -hmm. recognition. Like, David didn't call me bitch last night. I was like, yes! <laughs> Yes, after the story, keep it going. Keep it going. And Come then I started on. pushing, pushing buttons and I couldn't finish my storyline. <laughs> I didn't get to hear it because it paused on me. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. But you see how we kept it going though? Levita and I knew because don't I say in class all the time? Keep going. Keep going. This is why you practice with our reader because even if you're not on screen, People to believe she's still having a full conversation. Let me read this comment real quick. Oh, please. This has to be the best show I've watched in a while. Bro, mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. You're absolutely amazing. Love you and look up to you just as much as I did when we were kids. Great oh, job. Aww. Aww. 
so sweet. <laughs> she wants something. She <laughs> lump in my throat. Nope. No, so listen. Levita, that's Levita beautiful. Did the same thing with her son. That's beautiful. Levita said the same thing with her son about what she did, her piece, her new movie. I have a new movie out. coming out, and I sent him the trailer, and he said something to me he's never said before. He was like, Oh, I want to see it. It look this looks pretty good. I was I almost fell over. So very good, Mama. So listen, when when is the mute when is the movie drop? Uh, very very soon. I have three coming out, but this one's coming out soon, and I'll definitely I'll sh I'll share this, the trailer with you. I'll send it to you. Yes, I'll get it up on the page, and I want you to come back. I would love to. I'll follow you. I'll love to. Yes. Um, oh. And we I just got to get from Curtis, uh, bruh, damn good show. He put it all in caps. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, yeah, I, I definitely appreciate that. That's 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 my brother, Christine. I appreciate the kind words. I'm glad I can always be an example for you. Um, but the the way you 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 and Cat are there for me unconditionally, uh, I couldn't have any level of success without you guys. So I appreciate you more. So this is the way I like to end my shows. First of all, can we do this again? Yes. Is that the discretion of your ladies, man? It's whatever they want. Lisa? Okay, quiet. All right. <laughs> Christine? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why is Christine the only one ever talking? <laughs> Yo. Wait, what? Like you're the only one that actually wants to talk. They, Lisa always look at my face. <laughs> look at my face. Lisa, like I'm serving face, damn it. So <laughs> this is this 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 is the. Um, I clearly don't know how to act on camera, so I obviously like I can't really see myself, so I don't know what faces I'm in. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, cancer. Cancer does the clothes are, are the clothes your kryptonite? No, it was it was really just my bedtime, <laughs> and so I was in the bed. Okay. <laughs> oh, Miss Rindle says I she's ready to get on there. And be like, come on, get on. <laughs> yes, and to answer the question, brother, yes, because usually Fridays I'm done teaching around about six o'clock, so it's not a problem. You know what I'm saying? Because again, I'm about world building. And I see what you guys are doing. I like to grow. And of course, if you're a smart man, being a part of a great journey is all you look for. So needless to say, like thanks to you, there's another group uh, just hit me up called Review Time Productions. They want me to be an advisor to their group. So thanks to you guys posting this today. He saw that on Instagram and he just sent me a DM talking about he wants me to do it. And I say, okay, bro, when I get done with this interview, call me. Let's rock. You know what I'm saying? I've been trying to get this shit away for free, dude. Well, you know what I mean? uh, listen, this is something we're going we going to schedule out to do more often. I I thoroughly enjoyed this, and for me to come out of that comfort zone and try something new, especially when I know it's on my bucket list, it, I feel emboldened to one take the class, two continue to do things that takes me out of my comfort zone and challenge myself. I'm appreciative of David giving us his time. Vita, I appreciate you giving me giving me and everybody who's been a part of this show who popped in or out, our, our family in the comments, anybody, you know, watching, I appreciate you all. Lisa, thank you so much. Christine, thank you for uh, coming on. Um, next time, no, you don't have to put on any clothes. You can just pop right in. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, just come as you is. Even. Come as you are. No bra, no nothing. <laughs> None. I, mean, I absolutely yeah. left left that off. I don't know if you can tell, but let, let's let's, oh, let's, let's, let's bring it back up. That. Let's bring it back up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got on Bad Girls Road Trip. That's how I went around the whole country with my tongue hanging out. That's it. I'm Gene Simmons' illegitimate black son. Okay. <gasps> I don't know about y'all. Oh, nigga, this pit the mute. This this mute me then, goddammit. Don't give Look me at no this. Look at this. Make it <laughs> <podcast>. <laughs>
Don't give me no microphone, man. If I can produce that, that, if I can produce that, right? Bro. So this that's is the way price. Christine Reynolds, that sounds messy. This is this is the way I like to end every show, right? So I like to give everybody one or two minutes to say whatever it is that's on their mind. Doesn't have to pertain to anything that we talk mm. about. It's a way of just archiving a message you might want to leave for somebody or something you really just wanted to get off your chest or unburden yourself with, or just some positivity or encouragement you want to put out in the universe. Um, look at this shit. I love mess, Chris. I love messy, Chris. <laughs> look at this shit. Um, so with that being said, um, we're going to give the ladies who wants to go first to give a final word. I will. Um, I will be 57 very soon. And <clears throat> I've been so focused on getting back on my career and I have no social life, but I, this really gave me a jolt of life. It's important to play whatever it is that you want to do. You really have to have a sense of child you have to bring your child back to you. So I appreciate that this time of, um, having fun. It's important to have fun in life. Life is really short. So thank you very much. I wasn't expecting this. So this was, I'm glad I, I said yes. I am extremely glad you said yes as well. She said 57 looks oh. great on you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, beautiful. So don't stick, don't, don't leave. I'm going I'm to drop you off screen, but don't log out of the uh, green room or backstage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who'd like to go next? I'll go next. Um, this was fun. It was fun to get out of my shell because I'm shy. <laughs> Something different. So I'm glad I joined. That's it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sweet and simple. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Leave Thank me you alone. Uh, <laughs> stick around. I'm dropping you backstage. All right, now, Christine, you're up next. Are you playing with your nipple? I'm trying to hide this stupid logo on this stupid shirt. Oh, okay. Who good. knew on the Friday night someone could drag me out of bed and I'd have such a good time out of bed talking to a bunch of people whom I've never met in person. Um, it is so good to have conversations like this with grown-ups. It is so good to have conversations like this. It's so great to have conversations with grownups and be able to have fun and be cordial and be friendly and be uh, playful and gather or gain information or knowledge you didn't know before. Um, it feels very positive. I absolutely look forward to the next time. And yeah, you know, sometimes you meet people and you don't know how it's going to work out. And then some other times you meet people and you're like, oh my God, this is my tribe. So I don't know you guys personally or individually, but it does feel a bit tribe like. So yeah, I like it. I agree with you and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And welcome to the tribe. We we we's family now. We's family. <laughs> we done did a couple things together, you and I, Big E. Yeah, we got much more to do. Yeah. Uh, stick around. I'm gonna drop you backstage. We'll do. Um, Mr. O, I won't give you the last word, okay? Mm -hmm. Which means I'm gonna speak my piece right here now, and I'm gonna get out of here. All right. You got it. So what I want to say in closing is that never, ever, ever, ever fear the unknown. Never be afraid to take that leap of faith and try something new. Never be afraid to have a new experience because you never know what you'll like until you try it. Me stepping out of my comfort zone and trying, you know, to act live on this podcast was very refreshing for me. 
and I appreciate David and Levita for bringing that out of me. I have the, you know, it's not the acting bug right now, but it is on my, you know, bucket list to do something in acting and have a role where I get to speak. Even if I have to produce it myself, it's going to happen. And I'm appreciative for having so many supportive friends and family around me. I just want to let you guys know I appreciate each and every one of you. Kayla, Cameron, Daddy, love you. Sky's the limit. Anything you want in this world, it's yours. As long as you're willing to work for it, it is yours. The world is a huge place. I hope that you get to see every corner of it before life's over. And I hope I put you guys in position to do that. Well, I'm going to read something I found on Twitter that related to all this that we went through tonight so that you all can understand. And I'll sit up. Uh, I found that the guy's Biggs Burke, B-I-G-G-S, Burke, B-U-R-K-E. And a young lady had retweeted this, and I caught my attention. Some of you are sleeping on skills and talents that can change your life. And that is what I'm about, finding those skills within yourself. And it doesn't have to be entertainment. It can be anything where you want to be a politician doctor, lawyer, even a janitor. There's nothing in life that if you find it satisfying and you feel successful by your own definition that you cannot achieve. Again, don't sleep on your talents and your gifts. Don't let no one else tell you what those are. Don't let nobody ever tell you what success is in these areas you want to do. Only your spirit and only you can feel it and see it and breathe it and know it. And take it from me, if you ain't get nothing else from my example tonight, that's all I ever did. And I ain't acting like I'm rich and famous. You see where I'm at. I'm not this, that, and the third. I've never been a flashy dude, so that's not been my thing. But I'm making good to take care of myself, my family. And when my friends are in need or when I'm in need, we can take care of each other because we're all learning. So, again, stop sleeping on your skills and talent that can change your life. Think about it. Be about it. David O. Out.